Kimberly Gutierrez is suing her mother, Rhonda George, for false allegations, debit card charges, and personal belongings. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2131, Gutierrez versus George. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Gutierrez, this is your mother. Yes, ma'am. And who is this? My grandmother. And that's your daughter? Yes. I'm reading the complaint and the answer, and this is what your complaint is about. You claim that your mother had you falsely arrested as a result of which you spent four months in jail. While you were in jail, it is your claim that your mother used a debit card of yours, I think $3,000 worth, and you had some belongings at her house that you want. I gather that you've had some problems in your own life. You have at least three children. Yes. Was the state ever involved in placing the children in foster care? No. And what about your daughter? My daughter, yes. And how old is your daughter? She's 19 months. At what point did the state become involved with your daughter? In May of this year, May 18th of this year, when there was false allegations made against... Well, when my mom refused to give me my daughter back. In May, when you brought your daughter to your mother's house, when? I called my brother on May 17th of 2022, and I asked him to babysit my daughter. Your brother. And does your brother live with your mother? Yes, he was staying with her at that time. So on the 17th, you asked your brother, who was staying with your mother, if he would babysit for your daughter. Where were you going? I was needing to go to Fresno, and I had just received my income tax check. So I needed to go to Fresno, and I was on foot because my car was impounded the day prior. Were you going alone? To Fresno, yes. So you brought your daughter on the 17th of May to your mother's house, and your brother was supposed to watch him, according to you, while you went to Fresno. Watch, yeah, he met me down the street, actually, because there's a restraining order, so I didn't actually go to the resident. Who has a restraining order? My mother has a restraining order on me. Is the restraining order that she has against you a final order or a temporary order? It's good for three years. That's all I know. That's a final order. Was that a final order of protection after a trial, or did you consent to it? I was not notified of the court date. I... No, I was, didn't consent to anything. OK, so it was a default. I don't know what that means. It means you didn't show up, and they entered a final order of protection in favor of your mother. So you're not permitted to go to her home. Right. Since that's not really the subject of this, I don't have to get into it. In any event, you went on the 17th, you dropped your child off at your mother's house, your brother was there, and then what happened? I finally got to Fresno, I got a ride, I got to the check cashing place. It literally took me... Don't tell me, I'm not interested in that. 17th, you dropped the child off. You were supposed to pick the child up when? That evening. On the 17th? Yes. And did you? I showed up about... It was a little before 10. I showed up, I called my brother, I said, I'm down the street. He was like, yeah, I'll be right there. 10 o'clock at night? It was almost... Ma'am, I was on foot, and... It was just a second. I asked you, 10 o'clock at night? It was right before 10, yes. OK. When I got there, I called him. It had been about 15 minutes had gone by, and I called him back, and I said, where are you at? And he said, Mom won't let me leave with the baby. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, Mom won't let me leave with the baby. My mother instinct kicked in, and I went in, like, fight or flight, and I walked down to my mom's house, and I knocked on the door and was asking for my daughter. I finally came to my... Oh. OK. So when your brother said that to you, instead of going to the police, you violated the order of protection. I ended Under... up leaving and calling the sheriff. OK. But you didn't. You went... Of so course, you, you yes. went I was going the... for my daughter. Yes, ma'am. OK. And what happened at 10 o'clock at night or 10.30? Uh, yes. I finally realized that about five minutes of being at the house, I was like, OK, you need to leave. So I left, because she wouldn't open the door to give me my daughter. I left. I called the sheriff. And so I told them the situation. So they had walked down to my mother's and let her know that what she was doing was basically... No, the... don't mind what she was doing. The police came with you. And told her with they you. could arrest her. Good and told okay. her that if she did not, that she needed to give my daughter back. But because it was late, the baby was already asleep, and so the, the cops that came down, back down to me, and they said, look, we don't, because they knew me. Whatever. I'm allowing you to give me a certain amount of hearsay so that I can make this story make sense. Oh, okay. Do you understand? But don't tell me because they knew you, what they thought. Yes, ma'am. You were told to come back in the morning. Yeah, the agreement was, was that, uh, between my mom and the sheriff, was that I could pick up Malia in the morning. The sheriff told me to call before 6 o'clock in the morning, before he got off his shift, and that he would come back out and do another standby. The next morning came. Between me and my grandma, I had us call my mom. And no, no, just a sec. What does that mean between you and your grandma? Your agreement was you were supposed to call the sheriff, the sheriff, I according call, to you, I, before I call 6. I my grandma. 
No, not the grandma. The grandma was you weren't supposed to call your grandma. You were supposed to call right, the Right, but I needed a ride. I needed a ride. So I called my grandma to have her come pick me up. Just a second. Where were you? I was staying at a friend's house. I didn't live in Selma. Just a second. You were staying at what friend's house? The sheriff came, got behind us, and tried to, like, pin us in, and my grandma went to take off. So your grandmother was driving. Yes, ma'am. And she was trying to evade the police to go someplace else. Kimberly Gutierrez claims her mother, Rhonda George, owes for debit card charges and personal belongings. You were staying at what friend's house? My friend Isaiah's. Isaiah? Yes. I stayed the night there waiting for my daughter. The Just a morning. second. Isaiah. Isaiah what? Bonilla. And what is your relationship He's with him? He's my best friend. He's been my best friend since high school. Where are you living now? I live with my grandmother right now since I was uh, released. Full time? Right now, yes. What do you mean right now, yes? I'm in the process of getting my own place. Okay, so you called your grandmother and then... Called the sheriff. And then? Waited for the sheriff to respond. And then? The sheriff did not respond for a few hours. Okay, so you were waiting for the sheriff to respond. The sheriff did not respond until when? It was after 7 o'clock in the morning, and it was... Seven... Even the sh yes, ma'am, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Your daughter is, according to you, 19 months old? 19 months old. And she had prior to that been living with you? Yeah, she was living with me all the time, yes. She was living with you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now let's get back to this arrest that you had. According to your papers, your daughter was with you up until that time. What time did she wake up in the morning? Uh, usually she wakes up between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, well, then could you tell me why, if she wakes up between 7.30 and 8, why you would even contemplate picking her up before 8 o'clock in the morning? Because one of my issues was with certain officers that would have been responding, and the officer that responded the night of the incident, he told me, if you wanted me to be the officer to respond, you need to call me before I get off my shift. Fine, but he didn't respond to you. But according to no. you, he didn't respond to you. No, it was so a that my officer. question to you they is... They did respond if you're... at 7 o'clock in the morning. And did what? It was a horrible mess. Well, he did what? They responded. When they responded, he showed up. The officer told me that he did not want to be there. He said, if I have my way, you'll never see your daughter again. And I looked at him, and I said, wow, okay. What do you mean you looked at him? Where were you like, when you looked at him? I was right next to him, but I just... Where, at the precinct or at your no, house? At, no, down the street from my mom's. Okay, so he responded to you when you were down the street at your mother's house, and he said, I'm not getting involved in this, and if I had my way, you would never have your daughter. And so what did you do? So, at that point, my grandma pulled up, and I told him, I said, your assistance is no longer needed, and that uh, my grandma could just get my daughter. And he says, well, you already called me. The deputy did. So I said, okay, whatever. He asked me if I had somewhere to live, and I said yes, and whatever. And so he went down to my mom's. When he went down to my mom's, he was supposed to just go down there and get my daughter. When he was taking too long, I could walk so, so far this way, and I could see straight down my mom's street. So I did. When I did, I see that my mom was out there just giving him an earful. I know this woman very well, okay? So I just imagined what was being said about me. Well, I guess the back door is screwed and nailed shut at the house. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's okay. not important. Yeah. So anyways, my best friend went over the back fence. What do you mean your best friend? Isaiah Bonilla. Oh, so you brought Isaiah with you? He went... Just a second. So you have your grandmother, and then you've got Isaiah, your best friend, also to go to your mother's house. Yes, ma'am. He got and my daughter. Isaiah brought her to where you were. Yes. And then what happened? I started walking back towards Isaiah's house. When I started walking back towards Isaiah's house, my grandma pulled up in her car, and she was like, are you ready to go get your car out of the impound lot? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. And so I got in her back seat with my daughter. When I got in the back seat, I got in the middle. Well, then she was like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Your mom's over there saying a whole bunch of stuff to the deputies, so I don't know what's going to happen. And so I was like, well, I got to go get my stuff from Isaiah's. So I go to jump back out the car. As I go to jump back out the car... But it just... Now you have your daughter. Because I needed my wallet. My bag was at Isaiah's. My purse and everything was at Isaiah's. I went to go. I was going to go back and pick it up. Well, right when we were going to go back, the sheriff came, got behind us, and tried to, like, pin us in, and my grandma went to take off. So your grandmother was driving. 
Yes, ma'am. And she was trying to evade the police to go someplace else. Yes, ma'am. And how many police cars were involved? One. Were there ever any more than one police car? Once we got to the police department, of course, there's a police department. No, I'm talking about the number of police cars. So there's a police car oh, like now. coming behind us? No. It was just one. It was just one? Yes, ma'am. And you were accelerating no. to get there? Was the police car siren on? To no. Try to... Well, how did you know that he was trying to pull you over? Because he tried to hit her car. Oh, that would give you a clue. So you're telling me he tried to hit your grandmother's car without notifying you in any way to pull over? Yes, ma'am. That's why I spent four months in jail and I beat my case. I went to trial and beat my case. Everything was dismissed. I'm not responsible for the criminal justice system. I'm only responsible for what goes on here. Yes, ma'am. So I assume once you got to the police station, both you and your grandmother were arrested? Yes, ma'am. And that was in May? Yes, ma'am. And now we're... Uncross your arms. And now we're in December. Yes, ma'am. Of the same year. Yes, ma'am. And you're out of jail. Yes, ma'am. And you've been out of jail for about... Since August 25th. Who does your daughter live with? Right now, she, um, she's with the mentor. She's my ex-husband's aunt, ma'am. And who placed her with your ex-husband's aunt? I did. Not the court? No, I requested her. Does the child's great aunt have guardianship? No, I'm, I'm getting my daughter back, ma'am. But for the last three months, she's been with this aunt. Right, because Child Protective Services did get involved, and Child Protective Services, I've been doing everything that... Well, that's what I asked you. I asked you whether Child Protective Services... Child Protective were involved. Services did get involved with my daughter, yes. Did. That's what I assumed. And I've been drug testing, I've been Just doing... Just a second. Yes, ma'am. That's what I assumed, that Child Protective Services was involved. And so if Child Protective Services are involved, then they are overseeing the child's placement with the aunt. You have an ongoing case. Yes, ma'am. Probate court. No, not probate. Which one? Family court? Family court, yes. When was the case opened with regard to your daughter in the family May court? May 18th, the day I got arrested, ma'am. And that child became involved with the foster care system in May. Okay, so your grandmother also spent a little time in jail. How much? Two weeks. I, quite frankly, don't understand your case. While I was in jail, Your Honor, while I was incarcerated, my mom had all my, my debit cards, my ID. She had went and actually, because of me getting arrested, she had went to Isaiah's and picked up all of my stuff. You mean so... just a second? Just a second. Let me understand this. It is your claim that the reason that you had to go to Isaiah's house was to get your pocketbook, your wallet, your credit card that you, left just, that you left there. But I never made it there. I understand that. And Isaiah... Clearly, from what you tell me, knew of the problem because he was part of this little Ordeal. conspiracy to get your daughter out of the house and was at the back of the house to pick up your daughter who was being put over the fence. So why would Isaiah give your mother... Because she went over there with a baseball bat and busted out his windows. On February 4th this year, I had... I lost my twins, okay? And that was the first time I had contacted my mother because I was going through it and I messaged her and I told her, I said, I really need my mom right now. If anything, I need my mom right now. Kimberly Gutierrez is accusing her mother, Rhonda George, of wrongfully using her debit card and keeping her belongings. So why would Isaiah give your mother... Because she went over there with a baseball bat and busted out his windows. And the reason why all of my things were at my mother's was because I hadn't lived at my mom's for over a year. What your case is about... Is my belongings... Your, is you claim that your mother went over and got your wallet from Isaiah's because I asked you what you were doing here. I certainly am not looking into the allegations of false arrest. It sounds as if you did the absolute wrong thing in trying to regain your daughter, whose custody, actually, you lost at a dispositional hearing and was determined to be a dependent child and placed in foster care. That's what happened here. Right. OK, so I'm not even addressing your claims of false arrest. Okay, what so you did was actually the, the wrong thing. I said, so what are you suing for? Now, my, you said your... My you're... belongings, okay. my, my money. Just a second. What money? She used my... CalFresh, which is my EBT food stamps, and my CalWorks, which is my cash aid through the welfare department. Just a second. So you're suing her for taking your food stamps and your welfare check. Right. Just a second. 
your food stamps, and your welfare check. And this is the statement from my tax return of all the money that was on there. On where? On my debit card. It had over $3,000 on it, and I marked what was used when after she had picked it up. And then these are receipts from some of my belongings that was at her house. Just a second. You haven't lived in your mother's house for... I moved Shh. back to my mother's in the Just beginning. a second. Yes, ma'am. You hadn't lived in your mother's house, according to what you said to me. Whitney, was it a year ago? Didn't you say that you moved out of my your mother? My mom allowed me to come back. Because there was an order of protection. She had called me. I was living in Fresno, ma'am. Just a second. You hadn't lived in your mother's house. You said you were living with your grandmother. For how long were you living with your grandmother before I May? I I was living with my grandmother right now. I was living in Fresno, ma'am. I want to know what property you think... My clothing, my husband's clothing, my, my daughter's bassinet. I had jewelry there. I had uh, all of my clothing. Why would all of your clothing be there? You were living with your grandmother. I hadn't moved into my grandmother's until I got out of jail. I was living in Fresno, Fresno. and my mom... Shh, just a sec. You're not Is that what... Talk. I, I just... I'm not understanding your movements. Okay, my mom kicked me out in 2021, okay? My daughter was just a few weeks old. My mom kicked me out due to her boyfriend. She kicked you out? Yes. And? When she kicked me out, I went through Marjorie Mason, and Marjorie Mason had placed me in hotels. I was placed in hotels for about three or four months, okay? And then it was about January of 21... I was at this time, I was pregnant with twins. They had genetic defects. On February 4th this year, I had... I lost my twins, okay? And that was the first time I had contacted my mother because I was going through it, and I messaged her, and I told her, I said, I really need my mom right now. If anything, I need my mom right now. My daughter, she had never, had not seen my daughter. She was not a part of my daughter's life. I did not speak to my mother, nothing. So she made an agreement that she would watch my daughter, because I had to go to San Francisco, because I was too far along in my pregnancy, and it was just a big old mess. Do you have any of your daughter's property? No. Okay, now, let's talk about this card. Did you pick up her property from Isaiah? When... That's either a yes or a no, after the 18th of May. Well, how do I answer that when I did pick up her property, but her cards were not in there? Her driver's license wasn't in there. Her food stamp card wasn't what were you in there. Doing, what were you doing at Isaiah's? So she asked... Was this when she was in jail? Yes, right after she got arrested. So I went down there. No problem. He handed it right to me. Look in my wallet, make sure everything's in there. Like I said, her I don't know if it was her driver's license or ID was missing. Her food stamp card and the other card, the bank card. I don't know how to get proof... But her best friend, he cash-dabbed everybody money. There was a bunch of I, people. I have even himself. Information right here. Even himself and his girlfriend. Did and you, I don't want to get into the I, whole thing. I don't want to get into it either. It's far too complicated for me. Is what you're telling me that you never used a card that she had? No, I didn't. Because I'm not concerned about food stamps. Or no, welfare. I did not. Suing the wrong person. You were in jail, so you didn't need money from welfare. What proof do you have that I have your... my, bank... Shh. my bank statements. What proof do you have that your mother withdrew money? What... She was the one that went and picked up my cards. Oh, I don't know that. That's not what she says, and you have no proof. Isaiah's not here, correct? No. I don't doubt you when you say that somebody used your card. I just need proof my to mother, show... My mother, I know that she was supposed to get my daughter from CPS. She was supposed to go get a crib with my card. And I have the... <laughs> where she, And my grandma can... can. I just want you to show yes, me... Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. That oh. your mother... I believe that people used your card. I she need, used my card. No, I don't know that. I need you to show me proof that your mother... How am I supposed the, to show? I have the, I, my I, bank statements. But, but then I'll take a look at your bank statement. If your bank statement told me who used your card, then that's an easy. She said she did not. I just want you to show me proof that any of these were used. I mean, we have a lot of PlayStations, DoorDash, Amazon yeah. Marketplace. And all I've of those. that throughout Shh. the whole time. I understand that. I suggest that you concentrate on getting yourself together. If you want to reunite your family, I suggest that you put your priorities in order. Oh, they are in order. Evidently not. I work, I have a job, I go to school, I'm getting my own place, but I'm going to court, I'm getting my kids back. Good. Can I give you this? I don't know what it is. Well, I just want you to look at it. Did 
you're telling me is this is part of your daughter's criminal history? What is this? No, thing? I'm just telling you she just got out of jail just a couple of days ago. They haven't picked up charges, Your Honor. You were arrested on November 28th? Yes. I'm not going to let you tell me about this. You have a lawyer? Yes. As I said, Ms. Gutierrez, if you're trying to work to get your family back together... Yes, ma'am. ...and your kids back together... Yes, ma'am. ...it would be a good idea to think about having more children until you get these children back under your roof. We're done here. Your case is dismissed. Have a good day. This court is adjourned. Oh, I love her decision. I don't want to have nothing to do with any of them. They've burned their bridges. Perfect example of suffer the little children. So you have three kids, none of whom live with you. They go back and forth between a grandmother who would participate in evading the police, but where the police had to stop them by ramming the car. Yeah, I was going to say, there was something in the papers right. about a crash and... Well, she said he tried to ram my mother's car. So, fingers crossed for her. Yeah, but and the kids. But take care of... ...doing her cousin, Tina Archuleta, and her wife, Felicia Archuleta, for the balance of an RV and an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2096, Martinez versus Archuleta. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, each of you are suing each other for the hefty sum of $10,000. Martinez, you say you were like a cousin to yes. one of these defendants. Which one? Tina. That would be you. That would be me. And your name is? Felicia Archuleta. You live together. Yes, Are you married? Yes. <laughs> it is your claim that Tina purchased from you an old RV yes. for $1,000, that she currently has possession of the RV, that she has not paid for the RV, and that when you went to their home to collect the money for the RV, that one of them assaulted you. Both of them. The defendants say that the original purchase price, which was $1,000, was reduced because the RV was not running. They paid you the $200. Did you give her the $200? I did. You did. And that was the day that you took the RV? No. When? That wasn't the day that I took it. So what happened? No, no, no. You took the RV. When did you give her the $200? This was after I already had had it. Did you ever get $200 from the defendants? No, I didn't. I received 160 from, from Tina. Okay, so let, let's get back to the RV. How long did you have the RV? And it was just sitting on your property, is that right? Right. How long have you had it? I've had the RV for about six years. What did you do with it? Did you travel with it? I lived in it for about two months, and then I parked it. And... So it was running? Yes. But at the time you wanted to get rid of it, it wasn't running? No. Did you know what was wrong with it? Yes, the fuel pump was going bad on it, so we had to replace that. But it didn't start. They had to have it towed. Right. Tina towed it. Right. Back to their property. Yes, they did. Okay. So when they took it, the agreement was that they were to pay you how much? A thousand dollars. And you acknowledged that you were supposed to pay a thousand dollars. Yes. Did you get the title at that time? Not at that time. She. You did not. No. Is that correct? At the time that they took the RV and had a towed. They gave you no money. They gave me no, no money. money. No Subsequently, money. Subsequently, they gave you $160. Correct. According to you. And tell me under what circumstances they gave you the $160. Tina did. I went over to their house and they had handed, gave me the money in hand. Okay. And what did you give them? Well, they had the RV given, um, the title given to them the day that they took the RV. And then $160. Mm -hmm. Did she ever give you any other money? No. Now, when did you go over, according to you, to the property to get the rest of the money and tell me what happened? What date? It was August 27th in the evening. I called Tina and told her I was on my way. I went over to her property and I... You drove? I drove my car to her property and Felicia was outside loading That's the car. That's Felicia. Correct. That's you. And so I asked her, where is Tina? She says she is inside. I said, well, can you call her? So she called Tina on her phone. So Tina came out, and she comes up to me and says, what's up? And I said, I'm here to get my money. And Tina tells me, no, you're not getting nothing. I told you you're going to get it when I have it. 
I said, no, that is not the deal. I want all my money or I'm taking the RV. Now, I have text messages that show that about the RV, about her saying, well, if it's gonna be such a problem, you come and pick up the RV and your title. You no, know, you're going to, I'm, I'm coming to have it picked up tonight. You need to make sure that, you know, not to touch it. And I'm going Who was to living in the RV at the time? I had my friends in there that would help me try to get it started. So friends of yours were living yeah. in the RV. Okay, and she told go me. ahead. Okay, and so I told her that I was gonna throw them out because she has not paid me for my RV. And then in the text, she also replies that, well, if I want to be grimy, I got the title and I could go ahead and keep it. And I do have proof of that. I would like to see those texts. Here's the proof. Here you go. There's some more. Those ones. Well, you acknowledge in the text back and forth that you owe her $800. Yeah, I never said I didn't. The thing is, okay. can I, can you, I tell you one say, thing? All I'm asking is you acknowledge that you owe her $800. Mm -hmm. Okay. I told Tina, I'm done with it all. I'm gonna make sure that I have someone pick up the RV tonight. And she got upset, screamed, no, you're not. It's a done deal. No, it's not. And I said, I'm getting my RV tonight. Later. You chose not to do this shower? Well, it's not that I didn't choose not to do it. It's she went to Twitter and threatened to beat a uh, butt. And I don't, I'm not doing business if you want to fight me. Erica Martinez claims her cousin, Tina Archuleta, and her wife, Felicia Archuleta, owe for the balance of an RV. Tina and Felicia are countersuing for slander and an assault. Okay, so I have $800 balance for the RV. Now, you want to tell me about this alleged assault, which, according to you, is worth another $9,000? Well, yes. Well, as I was speaking with, with Tina about it after that, me and her were going back and forth. And we were yelling at each other, and then her wife got involved, and I told her, you need to stay out of it. And then I told Tina, I'm done with it all. You know, I'm going back. I'm going to make sure that I have someone pick up the RV tonight. And she got upset, screamed, no, you're not. It's a done deal. No, it's not. You're not doing this. And I said, yes, I am. I'm getting my RV tonight. And then I went, turned around, went into my car. Uh, Felicia says, you ain't getting no spit on me from the passenger side. And Tina goes, runs up and punched me in my face and my glasses flew this way. And that's when I told her, that's it. She's in trouble now. And so that's- Do you have a police car. report on that? I do. On photographs, do you have any medical record? I do got the medical records are right here. Okay, this is standard fare. It doesn't give me. It shows that I did go to um, the doctors two days after because I was having migraines. Um, and that, and I was that's, that. that's why I'm not understanding it because it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have photographs of your alleged injury to your face? No, I have the police reports, but it takes 15 I, days for them. But just a second. That. All I'm asking you is, you don't have medical records of the day of this injury. You had a headache. Two days later, you went to the hospital. So this is useless to me. You don't have photos of your injury, and you don't have a police report. Is that what you're telling me? I do me? have the police number for it, but I don't have oh. the report on me. Well, no. no. Okay. So far, I owe you $800. Now you have a counterclaim, because you acknowledge you owe her $800. You have a counterclaim for harassment, slander, and assault. Who are you alleging the plaintiff assaulted? Can I explain Who are you back to something? No. Who are you alleging the plaintiff assaulted? That would be you. That's Felicia. How did the plaintiff assault you? She ran me over. She tried to run she over. She tried to run me over. Just, well, there's a difference between running you over and trying to run you over. Did she run you over or did she attempt to run you over? She attempted to run me over. Okay. So that at best would be an attempted assault. Yes. So you suffered no injuries? No. Okay. Do you have any police report? I do, Your Honor. Indicating that you told the police on that date that she attempted to run you over? This is the one where she says where she tried to run my wife over. Okay, I'd like to see it, please. 
This is the original. No, no, I don't. I, that's all I want. Okay, so it says I told her to start the truck up and move her car because I was leaving and she was behind us still arguing. So she put it in gear and tried to hit my wife. Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you suffer any injuries? No, Your Honor, I didn't know. Okay. So this case is a very simple one. And then, Your Honor... Tina, the case is a very simple one. I... You owe her $800 for the balance of the RV, which you acknowledge in your text. But... The only other part that you have is for slander. Now, you say that in your cross-complaint, the plaintiff has slandered you. I'd like to see the evidence that you have that she has slandered you. May I see it, please? This isn't slander. I mean, they, she calls you nasty names, but sticks and stones, and she says they wouldn't pay me for my stuff, my RV, and so forth. That's not but slander. Can I say one thing that I need to get out there? Because originally, she, the first thing before even doing any of this, she wanted a puppy. And that's where all this title and everything came from. I read that. I, I, she wanted a puppy. I read that, and then she changed her mind. Yeah, and that's I, where we got the title. I, I don't care. You owe her $800. You acknowledge in your, in your text I messages... Try to keep your peace. Listen to me. I don't care. You acknowledge that you owed her $800, the balance of the $1,000 for the RV. She came to try to get it. There was an argument, and it got nasty. You owe her, Tina, the $800 that you agreed to pay her, the balance of the RV. Judgment for the plaintiff. Counterclaims dismissed. We're done. This court is adjourned. No, I don't like it. I'm very happy with it. She wanted a dog. That's why she gave me the title. She had asked me if I wanted a puppy, but she said that she'd make a deal with me and only charge me $1,200, which she changed her words, and it was $1,500, so I did not get the puppy. I tried to keep the peace and say, oh, okay, I'll pay you after she changed her mind. Uh, she's a good liar. She's just a liar. I don't care. It's, it's, she needs money more than I do. I honestly think it's ridiculous. We should never have to come to this. Because she ain't family. <laughs> it's all good. No more family, for sure. <laughs> This case was another great example of why it's so important, especially with family and friends, if you're going to sell something of value, to have it in writing. People assume with strangers, oh, of course I should have a writing when I'm selling something. But when it's to a friend or a family member, that gift and loan line are very close together. And a writing proves to this court very easily which one of the two it is. So I think that that's a great takeaway from cases like these. It is. It's a great takeaway. I've always said that when you apply for a marriage license. You know, usually you just have to show your citizenship, date of birth, but I actually think that a marriage license should include all the property that you claim is separate property. Yeah. Wouldn't that be easy? It would do away with probably 30% or 40% of the divorce proceedings that become acrimonious mm -hmm. because you sort of lay it out. So I think that really writing is always important because at the time... You're usually happy yeah. with each other. At the time that you're contesting that, say, you're not so happy. So <laughs> if you have a writing or if you have a license, it makes everybody's job and your stress level reduced. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about reducing my stress <laughs> level. Of course. Case 2150, Thomas Williams versus Gilmore. All parties, please step forward. Diamond Thomas and Rumby Williams are suing Rumby's former friend, Shamia Gilmore for a deposit and the cost of a brunch. Diamond, this is your boyfriend. Yes. And you were planning a baby shower? It was actually a sip and see for her. What is that? So it's like um, family and friends weren't allowed to really come to the hospital, so we decided to have a little event after the baby turned six weeks. Okay, so that was October 22nd. Yes. You hired Miss Gilmore as the caterer of that little event. She gave, quoted you a price, of $500 to cater the event, and you gave her a $250 deposit. Correct. Then some stuff bothered you a little bit because you, according to what I read, you found some either text messages or whatever between the defendant and boyfriend, which you felt were a little too cozy by her. Yes. And you gave her a buzz and you sort of had it out with her. I don't want you to do this anymore, whatever. Anyway, you called her back and said, yes, I want you to do it. She ended up not doing this sip and see. And she finally called you and said, I'm not doing it. I don't like 
the attitude, I'm not doing it. And you said, fine, give me my $250 back. She said, no. So you're suing her for not only your deposit back, $250. You did hire other people to cater the event. No, we did it ourselves. And you want her to pay $1,025 because you said that that's what it cost you over and above $250 plus the rest. Yes. Well, that you can't have. An offer and acceptance and a meeting of the minds. That was the contract. That doesn't have to be in writing. We have a verbal agreement via well, that's what I just. That's what I just said. So it is in writing. Who cares? Diamond Thomas and Rumby Williams claim Rumby's former friend, Shamia Gilmore, Oh, for a deposit and the cost of a brunch. Okay, you're going to tell me you chose not to do this shower? You chose not to do it? Well, it's not that I didn't choose not to do it. It's she went to Twitter and threatened to beat a uh, butt, and I don't, I'm not doing business if you want to fight me. It's, okay. It doesn't make sense. To okay, be well, I don't, I don't blame you. If she went to Twitter and said something nasty about you, then I wouldn't do her baby shower, sip and sip, whatever they call it, I wouldn't do it either. Then you have to give her back her 250 And I, well, I offered, I bought items for the brunch already. I offered the mimosa bar back and I offered 125 back. She wants the whole thing. If I already spent money out my pocket, there's no way you think I'm gonna give you a whole 250 That doesn't make sense. Well, just a second. Okay. Let me see what she wrote about you on Twitter. And also, good. Shh. So what you're saying is you actually made a purchase. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you have proof of that purchase that you made? I, I, I have the mimosa bar. I, didn't ha I don't have it with me, but I didn't print anything off. I, I don't even know what that is. Bar. What is a mimosa bar? Uh, so it's where you put the, the mimosa glasses on the... It's a grass wall, but it has where you hang the cups up at on the wall with the mimosa glasses, like the champagne flutes that you put on the wall. Uh, and then it has... Have like you used a, that before? No, well, I bought one before, but I still have it brand new. Just a second. Have you used it before? You're a caterer. Yes, ma'am. How many times? Quite a few. Uh, How many? You know, two hands, maybe seven or eight times. Okay. And you buy a new one each time you use it? Yes, ma'am. I let them Sh keep it. Just a second. You let them keep it. Well, now you can keep this one and use it next time. Okay. Um, and I would like to say something about the nine fifty that she owes us. We gave her a deposit of two fifty, right. and she is claiming that we had made anything threatening towards her. No, just a second. And she canceled on us. And so I feel that we didn't have the n enough ample time to be able to find another caterer There's no to do our event. Well, that's too bad. Can I ask why? Absolutely, because you're entitled to your money back, but your contract was for her to do a party, which she ended up not doing. Can we see the contract? Because I don't... No, you haven't... You have we a... don't have the contract. Yeah, and well, I... Yes, you do. You had an agreement. She was going to do an event for you on October 22nd. You agreed for her to do the event for you on October 22nd, and you gave her a $250 deposit. That's a contract. It's an oral contract. You had an offer. You had an acceptance. That's a contract. An offer and acceptance and a meeting of the minds. She was going to do the event for 500. You paid her 250. That was the contract. That doesn't have to be in writing. We have a verbal agreement via well, that's what Instagram. I just, that's what I just said. So it is in writing. Who cares? Well, it was the point that how are we supposed to be compensated for everything that we had to do after she canceled us? Well, you have to grow up. You have a baby. Yes. Right? Yes. Is this your only baby? Yes. Great, you have a baby. You have to grow up. I grew up so much, the old me would have beat out one of you. What is that? I'm not sure. Would you show this to the plaintiff? I'm just curious. She's going to give you back your 250 anyway. She chose not to do the event. What? I don't know what that is. I'm showing it to you. She gave me to show me something that you wrote. You want me to read? This? No, I'm or just asking. Tell you what it is. No, I'm just asking you if you were the author of that. Yes. And who would, did you write it about? It was just a general statement. It wasn't about anybody in particular. That's okay. why I didn't give that back. Direct it. Uh, name. Uh, it. Very, very easy. Your baby, nice. You happy with your baby? Yes. Very good. Do you have nothing to do with her anymore? No. Good. You have a mimosa wall. Use it for another event. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of 250. We're done here. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I don't agree with the judge's decision. I'm satisfied with the 250 and knowing that 
Shamia was wrong to keep our deposit after she canceled on us. It's just a lot of mess. I just, I won't do business with them ever again. It is what it is. If she felt some type of way, that's on her. I'm gonna keep going with what I'm doing. We just won't ever do business with her again because she is very unprofessional, just like the tweet see. Do you know it's an exciting day when at my age you learn something new? <laughs> We learn a lot of new things here. We learn a lot of new things here. So I've just about mastered the engagement party, the wedding, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, uh, quinceañeras, <laughs> christenings, baptisms, baby showers, if I haven't mentioned that, anniversary parties. But this is the first time <laughs> I ever heard that expression, a sip and, and see. see. Yeah, okay. I think it's a new thing. I think COVID probably played a role in it about people not wanting to have big parties or interact with large numbers of people, especially before giving birth with all the hospital requirements. So I like the idea. I've, I've only been to one or two, but the idea is you wait for your child to be about six weeks old, so they've been vaccinated and... They're not the vaccinated first shots. when you're six weeks. Well, the first, the first round of yeah. baby shots. And then they're able to see family and have a baby shower where the baby is included. So... <laughs> I'll add it to my list of... I'll see if I could find one bench. for you to... David Self is suing his ex-girlfriend, Joangela Stroger, for a phone and gas money. Court come to order, all rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2087, Self versus Stroger. Thank you. You're welcome. Your last name is Self? That's correct. There are two parts to your claim. I'm gonna get and dis... Take your hands out of your pockets. Sorry about that. I'm gonna get and dismiss one of them and get to the one that is important. You and the defendant were in a dating sort of relationship. That dating relationship sort of continued for a while. At some point, you had an argument and she left you. She stranded you. That was in July of 2022. You say you had an argument, she drove off and she left you stranded. You had to get a hotel for the night. You had to pay a friend for gas money. Blah, 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 blah. Correct. Forget that. That's what happens when you have a fight with your girlfriend. Okay. You have a fight with your girlfriend. How old are you? I'm almost 40. Well, for someone almost 40, they know how to get home. Correct. Okay, good. So let's get to what your lawsuit is. It's really about a phone, a phone that you say the defendant is responsible for losing or taking. Taking. I have video to Taking. That. And the defendant in some way acknowledges that she disposed of your phone. And she says she had very good cause to dispose of your phone. She's going to tell me why. So I'm going to get some dates from you, Mr. Self. Okay. And I'm going to, at the same time, explore what I see is her answer and her counterclaim. Okay. Now, after the two of you had broken up, Miss Stroger was at a bar. And she was at a bar on... What date? I would say that would be the 16th. It was actually on the 19th. August 2nd. Was it 8-2. You see how... She, she knows better about these dates than I do. Well, but it's your case. I understand that. I'll... So let's say she's right, that it happened on August 2nd. Okay. And at that time, the two of you were no longer dating or a couple. Yes. And you were going to a bar. And when you got there, was the defendant there? Not that I was aware of at the particular time. You didn't see her? I didn't see her, no. What time did you get to the bar? I'd say about four or five. Anybody else at the bar? There's quite a bit of people there, you How many people? I'd say about 30. Anybody you knew? Quite a bit of people. Of the 30 people there, how many people did you know? I'd say at least 10. But you indicate when you got there, you did not see the defendant. No, I wasn't paying attention to her at the particular time. Well, you say that there were 30 people in the bar, Correct. 10 of whom you knew, so you knew some people, and this was a former girlfriend of yours with whom you had been close association and intimate, right? Correct. And you didn't see her. Well, they have a back patio, and then they also have the indoors and everything like that. And then they have a front area, too, as well, so... Tell me, Mr. Self, when did you, in fact, see her? It's when she was, uh, doing the bowling. And that was a little bit later on when I was playing pool. About what time was that? I don't know, probably, like, seven or eight. So you had been in the bar for between three and four hours? Yes. Okay, so now you're at the bar for three or four hours. And are your friends there, these ten people that you knew? Yes. Now, I'm gonna go back a little bit to the breakup that you two had. Gotcha. Was it a, a mutual breakup? So what ended up happening and everything that uh, we had a disagreement on the, the 23rd in Norco and she left me stranded there so I had to get another friend to give me a ride back to my uh, residence. I can't understand a word you're saying because you're speaking too fast. On the 23rd. That better. She uh, left me at a barbecue and uh, had a friend give me a ride back to Riverside, California. A friend who was at the barbecue? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you were at a barbecue with her. That's correct. And that was 
how far away from where you were living in Riverside? I say about 20 minutes away. And your friend was at the bar with the queue, and after you had an argument with her, your friend took you home. Prior. No, no, not prior. That is that what no, you just uh, said to in, me? In Norco, California, is when she left me at a barbecue. And then at the bar, near, or when we were down in Huntington Beach on the 30th, she left me. I have video that shows all that. All right. I asked you whether the breakup was acrimonious. So one time she left you at a barbecue that yes. where you knew somebody who drove you home. Correct. Okay, and you didn't stay in a motel, you didn't do no, anything didn't. else. Okay, good. And then she did it again. Yes. Is that what you're saying to me? Yes. And the second time was when? It was on the 30th. Okay. And that is the time when you say you had to spend some time over. So after she left you the second time, yes. is that when you no longer communicated with her? That's correct. Did you say, why did you leave me? How, how dare you leave me? You didn't have any communication by text or phone or anything else, is what I'm asking you. So her cousin's supposed to play in a band. He showed up late. She was upset and distraught about showing up late. Uh, Who showed up late? We did, because I was with her. She I just need a date of that. On the 30th. Sir. I have on the 30th. So she was upset that you showed up late and... We showed up late to her cousin's thing. That's supposed to be at 2 o'clock. We got there about 2.05. She's upset about that. When we were driving down the road because we we're trying to find parking, which everybody was around and everything, she was getting upset and um, getting angry with another driver to the point where I had to pull the e-brake to stop the vehicle as I thought she was going to run into it. And I then tried what to happened? de-escalate the situation as much as possible. Mind you, there's two minors are in the back. I would just like to know, was the breakup, I'm trying to figure out, was the breakup acrimonious or mutual on the 30th? Who broke up with whom? She left me. She left you there That's correct. on the 30th. After she left you there on the 30th, did you have any communication with her? I was done with it. Just a second. So after the 30th, you didn't see her or communicate with her until you saw her on August 2nd, is what you're saying? Yes. I didn't see her again. Didn't see her again or communicate with her from the 30th of... July. July until August 2nd, a few days later. Yes. Is that what you're saying? I'm I not... believe so. I can look at my records right now to see, but I don't believe I gave her a call or anything like that. Okay. And when you saw her at the bar that you were in, you saw her later between six and seven. She was bowling. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. It's not an answer. The answer yes. is yes. Yes. She was bowling. You were playing pool. Correct. And what this is about is your phone, which yes. you're missing. So yes. tell me about the phone, sir. So I have a Note 10 Plus that was behind the bar at the time. Instead of going to my vehicle, which I typically charge it from that Just a phone. second. So you were charging your phone at Cor the bar? Correct. When had you put the phone in to charge it? Later on in the evening, around 10, maybe 11, I'm guessing. Cause it, 10 or 11. I'm guessing. Just a second. 10 or 11. So... Because there's a few times I actually go in there, I charge it, and then I use it for a little bit. Well, but there. you saw it the last time... I apologize for that. Last time you saw it, you plugged it in. It was like 10 or 11. So now you've been in the bar from 4 to 10 or 11. Yes. And she was there, at least as far as you know, from about 7 to 10 or 11. Yes. Keep going. So uh, I charged it and... Uh, what were you doing with the phone all evening? Talking, texting. Mm -hmm. Texting and stuff like that. Texting. Communicating, yes. To whom? Friends. Friends. What's going on, you know, social media, all the good stuff. Okay, go ahead. So anyways, uh, I was playing pool. I went outside, had a cigarette, and then that's when she, uh, at 1233 is when she ended up with her girlfriend looking around and all this other stuff. Like I stated before, I have the video that shows that on the, the camera. Would you like to see it? So far, I'm not understanding you. So why don't you explain it to me and then you can show it to me. So far, it's all a jumble. 12, 12, 30 at night. You 12, have... 33 is when she stole the phone. Is when she stole the phone? That's correct. And you bought the phone when, sir? About two years ago. And how much did you pay for it? I don't know, I think like $800, $700. Well, something. this is your case. How am I supposed to figure out you're suing for a phone? that she took? How am I supposed to figure out how much she owes you for the phone if she took it? I don't know how much I paid for it, but I know it retails for about $1,200. Show me. So I got the, the case cover. What kind of phone was it? Note 10 Plus. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus is typically 395 to 512 At this point in time, yes. Well, that's what it would cost you to replace it. OK. Now, you do not deny that you put your hands on his phone in a manner in which you intended to have it removed from his custody, 
which means, according to you, you took the phone out of the charger and threw it in the trash Correct. or the trash someplace. So far, Mr. Self, the defendant acknowledges that she took the phone okay. and trashed it. All right. And I want you to make sure that you answer my questions carefully. While you were at the bar between 7 and 12, did you ever show anyone at the bar a photograph of the defendant? No, I did not. Now I'll hear you. Um, so I got to the bar around 8.30 because I played darts that night. I did not see the plaintiff. Um, I was playing bowling. There was an arcade game. And uh, when he came in, he started showing videos of me. That's um, incorrect. Don't speak. There is a protective order in place. And if you want to vacate that protective order because you question service, you better do so. In the meantime, I suggest you stay very very far away from her. David Self claims his ex-girlfriend, Joangela Stroger, owes for a phone and gas money. Joangela is countersuing for harassment. Now, did you see him showing videos of you to anyone at the bar? I saw him showing videos. But didn't see what they were? No. I would never do such a Shh. thing. Apologize. Could you stand up, please? Absolutely. Do you know Mr. Self? I do. Tell me your name. Amy. <clears throat> Amy what? Clack. Were you at the bar on the 2nd of August? I was. And you know the defendant? Yes, she's a friend of mine. And what about Mr. Self? How do you know him? As her ex-boyfriend. Be careful of what you answer me. Did you see what Mr. Self was showing on his phone? I did not see what he was showing on his phone. I saw him showing the phone, and I had friends who came up to me to see no, if I had no, seen you, it. No, no, you can't tell me what your friends told you. Understand. You can sit down. Now... Ms. Stroger, your answer, and of course your counterclaim, involved the fact that Mr. Self was showing intimate pictures of you yes. that he had maintained on his phone. So far, we don't have a witness to that. Mm. So what I want you to tell me is whether or not you personally had a conversation with Mr. Self about those videos on that night on August 2nd. I asked him not to show video of me around the bar that night. You did have a conversation with him? Yeah, because he approached me. Put your hand down. I want you to tell me about the conversation. He approached me, basically... Not ba I don't want to hear Sorry. basically. He uh, approached me what time? saying hi um, about 9.30 that night. Approached me saying hi. I told him I didn't want anything to do with him, that I had seen him showing videos, and that I was told that it was sexual videos of myself. And what did he say? He said he can do what he wants with his phone and walked away. Do you recall that conversation, Mr. Self? There was no conversation that took place. Uh, the only video... No, 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 no. Slowly. There was no conversation, was no conversation, conversation that, took place. that took place about anything like that. What video I did have was her being irate over there in Huntington Beach. So if you'd like to see that too as well. No, I'd like to see the videos that she says that you have of her on your phone. I don't have any videos of her like that on my phone. Did you delete them? I don't have... Just, just a second. Oh, he has a new phone. <laughs> Got it. He has <laughs> just on them. He has a new phone. Well, I did have a, um, a letter stating that he did get the backup and he's got all the videos again. Oh, I'd like to see that. I do have a backup. Once I... Put... Just a second. Okay. He sent this to my boss at 1.30 in the morning. 2.43, sorry. Shh. Mr. Self, this was sent by you to her boss on the 9th of August. Okay. Would you tell me the purpose of sending this letter to her boss? She does very good at showing that she's uh, a good person and all the other good No, stuff. no, I don't think... Listen to me. I don't necessarily think anything. Okay. I think any woman that allows photographs to be taken of her, intimate photographs that she would not want put on I the... Would, I'm speaking... That. Okay. I'm speaking that she would not want posted on Correct. the front page of a local newspaper. Correct. I think that that's foolish. Yeah. I do. And I know a lot of people do it. I do a shout-out every once in a while and say that that's stupid to do. And I think certainly if you were showing those videos or those photographs to anyone at the bar because you were annoyed with her or whatever you thought it was fun, I think that that's... Childish. 
sad, maybe worse. What I want to know is, after this all happened, why you sent this email to her boss? Because the thing is this, that she is trying to pin me, pin me as a bad guy or something like that, is what she's really trying to do. She's trying to manipulate it to be on her side. She lies and manipulates all the time. And I've seen that because I was with her. I should know. Okay. Okay. The thing is this. I have the video of her over there in Huntington Beach being irate, unable to have a conversation. I like don't this. care if she's irate, sir. Right now, she has no proof that right. you were showing videos of her at the bar that evening. Yes. You don't have that because that's your counterclaim. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that then I have to dismiss your counterclaim. But there's also harassment and stalking that he's been doing. Okay. I have to dismiss that part of your counterclaim, which is for revenge porn. Okay. Now, you're going to tell me about the stalking, and first I'll take a look at a police report. Um, the police report, unfortunately... Just a second. If you don't have it... I have a restraining order, and the police... Just a second. Do you have a restraining order that's in effect now? Yes. I'd like to take a look at it. I'll see your honor, too. I have also. No, no, I'm not. Okay. I didn't ask you anything. Were you at a hearing, Mr. Self, on this protective order? I never even got served papers at all for anything. I have proof of service. Was there a signature on it? Well, Mr. Self, she has a restraining order that's... And the hearing date was August 25th, 2022. She appeared. You're supposed to stay away from her. I'm just telling you. you and I'm favor. telling you, considering the fact... And I don't know whether you were released from prison recently. Are you still on parole? I'm on parole right now, yes. OK. And he... Well, if you're... I didn't ask you anything. Well, if you're on parole, Mr. Self, and you say you weren't served with this restraining order, I, was I would strong, I would strongly advise, sir, that you retain counsel and question service. Yeah, I've, I've contacted my probation officer. They're well aware of the situation. Don't, don't well. tell me what they're aware of. I'm telling you that there is a protective order in place. Gotcha. And if you want to vacate that protective order because you question service of that protective order, you better do so. Okay. In the meantime, I suggest you stay very, very far away from her. He okay. called me yesterday. I called you yesterday? Just yes. Don't speak to her. Tell me what the conversation was yesterday. Um, I was on my way to work, and I didn't know the phone number, so I answered it, and he said, please just give me a minute, and I hung up. Did you call her yesterday from that phone? There is a phone. Just, I... just a second. That would be a yes. Yes. Okay, and you know the situation is hostile. Yes. And you knew you were coming here today. That's correct. Would you tell me, please, why you called her yesterday? I didn't mean to call her by any means. That's a pocket dialed her. Well, if it but called her or pocket correct. dialed her, sir, that means that you would, were able to transfer all the information that you had on your old phone into your new phone because after the experience that you had at the bar there would be no reason for you to have her number in your phone. I know. Unless you just transferred... I got it right here. Well, if you got it... Listen to me. Right. If you got it right here, then it wasn't a butt call. So you can either butt call when... Am I wrong about that? You know, I'm not <laughs> technically sophisticated. But I do know this. I can't think into my phone. Now, maybe there is a phone that you can think into. I'd say, well, I have her number right here. I can't say... To, am I missing something here? You yeah. might only butt dial me because I'm in your favorites, but. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you send this to her boss? It shows that she lies and manipulates and all sorts of stuff to get her way. I'm at a point where I don't actually believe that you didn't show some photographs of her I around that not. bar. David Self is accusing his ex-girlfriend, Joangela Stroger, of throwing away his phone. Joangela is countersuing, claiming David shared private photos of her. Okay, so you called her. You want to tell me why you called her yesterday? I accidentally called her. What's her number doing in your phone? Because I have all the... I keep all the numbers and everything just in case I have to get a hold of somebody. Because you, you know how many times I've been with her and, and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? Yeah. Tons of times. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, so something, Mr. Self. What's I don't believe you, sir. Okay. I don't believe you, and I don't believe that there was ever any reason for you to contact her boss. I think she has an order of protection. Okay. I'd like to see proof of service. Do you have it? Yes. Oh, it's not connected with that. I'm sorry. If not, I have a picture of the service. 
in front of his house. Yeah. Server's name. So it was personal service. And I do have a video after the fact of what she's talking about the individual coming to the house. So I I'm just that. reading the proof of service, sir. You said you weren't served. I I'd like served. to see proof of service. If you had proof of service, you were served. I wasn't served. Okay. Just because you took a picture in front of the house and everything doesn't necessarily mean anything. Oh, yeah, it does. Why is that? I wasn't even at the resident at the time. They took a picture of me. Shh. Yeah, I would suggest to you, Mr. Self, Stay away. if I would suggest to you that hire a lawyer. Okay. If you think that the service was improper, I'm satisfied with it, and another judge was satisfied with it, and I still don't understand why you wrote to her boss. Have... Why you wrote to her boss afterwards? Any other communications? To my boss, yes. May I see it, please? Well, this is also written on August 9th, sir. This is from you, and it's a very graphic email to her boss. You want to take a look at it? I do, indeed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Thank you. So this is really just stating the individual that they hired that they... No, I'm just asking you whether you sent that to her boss. That is my email address, and that looks yes. like my writing. So, that's correct. That's my... just the the question is, did you send that to her boss? Yes, indeed. Okay. May I have it, please? And that was after the events, a week after the events of the 2nd of August, right? Okay, yes. You want to tell me why you sent that to her boss? Well... I mean, it's not telling that she's that she's a thief, you have to be careful of her. It's talking about sexual things. Where is it saying sexual things in that? Oh, very easy. You say she lies to her boss about cramps while we lay in bed. She is literally taking up a work saying that she's, you know, sick or... I'm asking you why. Why would you send this to her boss? It shows that she lies and manipulates and all sorts of stuff to get her way. Okay. okay. The fact okay. of nature, I understand that I've been to prison and all sorts of stuff. I can be the bad guy and all that great stuff. I understand that. I'm not saying she's a good person. Correct. I'm not saying you're a bad person. Correct. She's got to pay for her phone. Yes. You got to pay for this. Because I'm at a point where I don't actually believe that you didn't show some photographs of her around that not. bar. I don't believe that you didn't show some photographs of her around that bar. I would never do such Just a Just a second. Well, the same person who would never do such a thing wrote to her boss yes. that you were present when she called her boss and said, I can't come to her because I have cramps and she was laying in bed with you. Correct. Okay? And that same person wouldn't show a picture... A no, picture. No. Different. Okay, good. On your counterclaim, I am awarding you $5,000 on your counterclaim. From that, I'm taking off the $500 that... Because he had no right to trash his phone. There are alternatives. One of them is not trashing his phone. Therefore, ordering on the counterclaim a judgment for the defendant in the amount of $4,500, plaintiff's case is dismissed. We're done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. This court is adjourned. She gets away with it again. The judge is very fair. Unfortunately, he tried to make me look like a bad guy, but the judge can see right through him. Did I show her videos? Yes, where she was being irate right over there in Huntington Beach. That he's showing sexual um, videos of me and him. The nudes and all that stuff? No. Why would I do something like that? I went black, and that's the only reason why I threw the phone in the trash in the first place, because I felt helpless. She sold me on this great person and thing, but come to find out, you know what, it's not what it is. I gotta just be more careful with her phone around. <laughs> I guess, Sarah, it's because of my generation. But I've been saying for a very long time, even before the Internet, because, you know, I was, in fact, young at some <laughs> point in my life, and they did have all kinds of cameras and Polaroid cameras back in the day. Mm -hmm. But never take a photograph of yourself or allow a photograph to be taken that you wouldn't like to see on the front page of the New York Times. And now with social media, I, I think that that's more true than ever. To me, why would you post anything or take a picture, allow a picture to be taken that might later embarrass you? I agree to an extent, but I disagree with you that in this case, because the defendant mentioned that the plaintiff had taken some of this video and photo without her permission. And I think that now it can get a little bit blurry as to, well, I didn't approve my photo taken, obviously a sexually explicit photo getting sent to your boss is not the intended purpose of that photo. I think right. whoever sends that photo misdirecting the intention of the photo is the one that should be held accountable, not the person that was no. sending it in for a purpose of uh, the, a long distance relationship. There's many reasons why now people might send photos that they wouldn't want plastered on the front page of the New York Times. 
But as the recipient of a photo like that, you, you're not supposed to republish you it. You have a responsibility, if you care enough about that person, to keep the, its intended purpose, its intended purpose, private. I absolutely agree with you. Mm -hmm. But it is bad judgment, so I don't mind repeating at least <laughs> my perspective, okay. which is, if you don't want to see it out there, don't take it. Under Tara Gordon is suing her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, for the balance of a wedding contract. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 2030, Gordon versus Jackson Smith. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Gordon, you're a wedding planner. Yes. You called her to plan a wedding that you were having in Las Vegas. Yes. It's your husband? Yes. The wedding was scheduled for what date? April 30th of 22. Your lawsuit against the defendants is for the balance of a fee that you say is due and owing to you. Ms. Jackson and Mr. Smith are counterclaiming for a whole bunch of things. They said that not only didn't they get everything that they paid for, that you selected the venue and they were ejected from the venue because they weren't allowed to have a wedding there or serve liquor. So what was your fee that you quoted the defendants, and how much of that fee did they pay? My fee for planning the wedding was $4,000. And that $4,000, was that fee reduced to a contract? Yes, it was. I'd like to see it. Okay. Ms. Jackson, this is your first wedding? Yes. And yours? Yes. Okay, your total fee was 4000 and a deposit of 2000 Did they give you a deposit? Yes. Okay, so they signed an agreement to pay you $4,000. How much did they pay you in total? In total, for our planning fee, they paid... No, in total, how much did they pay your company? $2,000. 2000 Correct. So how our company is set up is we're set up as an affordable payment plan for a wedding, so we set up our clients on a payment plan. So they also pay the expenses of all of their wedding through us. So you have to send them an invoice for what it was that you spent for the vendors. Correct. Okay. And then and also the default of that contract states that if they miss payments, they have breached the contract. That's why we're here. Each of you is accusing the other of breaching this agreement. You say that they didn't finish paying you what they owed you, and they say you didn't furnish the services to them that they signed up for for the wedding. They gave you $2,000, and the wedding was supposed to be held where? The banquet hall. Did you send them a deposit? No, because at that time, she had not paid enough money. Just a second. The answer is no. You had not sent them a deposit. No. Had they sent you the deposit of $2,000? They sent me the deposit for our planning fee, yes. I'm talking about for your planning fee, $2,000. Yes. yes. And how much was the deposit for... 50% of $16,000, which was $8,000. And where is the invoice for that that you sent them? I don't have that invoice because she was not able to secure the venue. I read it. And from what I read in your complaint, the original venue that you secured, according to you was rendered unavailable because of a broken pipe. That was the second venue. We went through three venues. The first venue, she lost that venue because she could not keep up with the payments and did not submit money for a deposit. The second venue was the R&R &R Event Center. That venue she lost because a pipe broke in the venue. Okay, and just, with that, just a second. R&R... &R event Center. And when was that taken? That was booked on... March 11th, 2022. And I do have the invoice for that. And how much was it? $2,250. Okay, that's much better than 8000 Okay. Did she put in a deposit? The deposit was made from the monthly payments that she makes towards her wedding. Show me invoices that you sent her every month. Yes, that's I have that. Well, I'd like to see them. This is the statement of the account. It lists all the invoices that she was sent on a monthly basis. So she paid you the $20,000 that was invoiced. Her wedding cost a total of $23,000. No, no, that's not what I said. Not Opening balance was zero. Invoice $20,451.57. Paid $19,356.57. That's what this says. Correct. Uncross your wrongs. Correct. No, that's, okay, that's so correct. she paid for everything. Now. No, she didn't pay for everything because, as I just stated, her wedding cost a total of $23,651. No. Let's go back to, because I see that we're not getting anywhere. Before her wedding, before anything 
happened, before she said, I do, and before he says, I take you, she paid practically $20,000, which was your original estimate on her budget for the wedding. It, there's a second. That's either a yes or a no. Before the wedding, your original budget that you were given by the defendant, I read the papers, was $20,000. So, and as I... Mm -hmm. That's either a yes, I read the papers, or a no. Yes, that okay. is the budget she stated she would like to stay around. But, however, in planning a wedding, you cannot give an exact of how it's I didn't cost. say that. I so didn't... After Madam, went... pay careful attention to me. I've made 16 weddings. I've had 16 event planners. I know exactly how it works, and I know exactly that you can't always predict to the $100 or $50 or sometimes $500 how much more the wedding is going to cost. It never costs less. That's not what I said to you. I said by the time the wedding took place, she had paid the vast majority of the original amount that she said she wanted to spend for the wedding. And that is accurate. She Correct. said she wanted yes. to spend 20000 She gave you over 19000 Did that include your fee? No, it didn't. Oh, just a second. So the answer is no. That's what she wanted to spend exclusive of your fee. Correct. Now, of your fee, she gave you an initial deposit, or they did, of $2,000. So... That's yes. either a yes, yes. or a yes. no. She gave yes. you yes. $2,000. Did she ever pay you the other $2,000 no. for the fee? And the rest of the expenses that you want are the additional expenses over and above the $20,000 that... Stop shaking your head. Over and above what she originally said she wanted to spend. Correct. Now... I'm going to get to what happened just about a week before the wedding. Okay. You had booked a place. She had paid for the place, $2,250. Yes. And that was at R&R. &R. According to you, something happened at R&R. &R. Stop shaking your head. It's annoying. Something happened at R&R. &R. What happened at R&R &R and when? Correct. The wedding was scheduled to happen on April 30th. I just was in... tell me what happened at R&R. &R. I was informed by Rico, the owner, sitting on that side, that a pipe had busted and the venue would no longer be available for usage on her wedding date. And on what date was that? It was around the week before her wedding, or two weeks before her wedding, sorry. Date? I don't have the exact date. You own, manage, or what, this R&R? &R? I'm the owner of R&R &R Events. Okay, tell me your last name, sir. Cox, C-O-X. Do you remember having a conversation with the plaintiff about the venue? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember when it was? March 25th of 2022. Can you tell me what you said to her and what she said to you? We had a conversation. I'm like, hey, problem with my venue. I had a pipe that busted. I won't be able to host her wedding. Well, the reception, I should say. So I informed her. I can put her in contact with other venues that I may know, or I could send her back the deposit. She asked for the deposit back. I sent the deposit back probably within the hour. How much was the deposit? $2,250? No, ma'am. It much was, was $1,125, which was half. So 50%? Yes, ma'am. So you sent her back the deposit? Yes, ma'am. Did you receive the deposit, Miss Gordon? Yes, I did. The wedding wasn't until April 30th. So Correct. you had plenty of time. Well, not plenty of time. You had time to look for a new venue or else which they would not have to change the date. Correct, and they found Just it. Just what venue... You can sit down, Mr. Cox. Thank you very much. What venue did you select? And had you ever used them before? No, I had not. I never worked with a challenge budget like this for a venue. I, I, if you don't like the budget, don't take the gig. Yeah, cool. I won't. And that's where the reception was held. But that venue was not allowed to have this kind of party. I was I, not aware of that until the day of the wedding. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. That's not their problem. They hired you as an event planner. They did. They're and just they got second. a wedding. They... The wedding went the entire time. The wedding was not closed until after the wedding had already ended. So they used the venue regardless. Okay. Miss Gordon, mm -hmm. it's your job as the event planner, which is what I don't understand you being here. Mm -hmm. It's your job as the event planner. They don't live in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's your job to ensure that the place that you select is a venue that's capable of performing the duties 
that you outlined in your contract, which means they serve food, they're allowed to serve liquor, they're allowed to dance, they're allowed to host an event of how many people? It was supposed to be 120, but all of my guests didn't get their invitation. So. Okay, so over okay. 100 Actually, people. Your Honor, it wasn't that they were not allowed to have the wedding there. They were allowed to have the wedding there. What they were not allowed to do was the business was not allowed to operate after a certain time, and that is what the business owner produced to us. Just a second. You want to show me a contract that she signed have, with that yes. business owner? Ms. Gordon. Yes, I do. Yeah, I would like to see the contract that you signed with this business owner. Sarah, just for my own information, would you look up this venue, yeah. please? Tell me what you find. Sure. Ms. Gordon, this space was a little less money than the previous space that you had selected. Correct. $500, $700? Yes, and that's because they were not providing all of the things that the original event pl place was providing. Was this event space that you booked at the end of the evening, I don't want to use the word raided, closed by the police? That's either a yes. Did the police arrive at this venue? Yes, they did. Okay. And what time did the police arrive at the venue? They arrived at 9.30. Is there a police report that anyone has? No. And how many parties have you done where police arrived at the end of an evening or during the course of an evening in the two years that you've been in Las Vegas? Never. And the police arrived at this wedding not because anybody was creating a disturbance, they weren't shots fired. Well, That's... no, that is, that is why. You may say, sir, I don't know anything about the venue, but that's your job. You're supposed to know about the venue. When I told her in the first place that she needed to postpone her wedding, that was my profession. You mean that's... Of, of no! No! That's not what she hired you for, to tell you to postpone her wedding. Wedding planner Tara Gordon claims her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, owe for the balance of their wedding. Beatrice and Nicholas are countersuing for breach of contract. Okay, police arrived at this wedding not because anybody was creating a disturbance, they weren't shots fired. Well, That's... no, that is, that is why. They initially had a report because well, her... Well, I don't know that. If you can show it to me... I don't have... I'd be more than her. happy to look at it. The police showed up. May I bring my witness up, please? For what reason? Because she can attest to the altercation that took place prior, which is why we were even brought up on the radar, because the other businesses in the vicinity of where the business takes place had complained. There was a lot of altercation back and forth outside of the event, because she refused to assign the agreed-upon payment plan to continue payments after the wedding. You understand that I'm not particularly sympathetic I'm not I'm, less, I'm letting you know I'm not particularly sympathetic for the following reason. Mm -hmm. Somebody plans a wedding and has a budget of $20,000 plus your fee, so that's, say, $25,000 that they either put together or are saving up for a wedding, first for each. A week before the wedding, something happens with the venue where the wedding could not be held at the venue of their choice. They're relying on an out-of-state wedding planner. That's you to find a legitimate venue that is licensed to have an event. When they get to Las Vegas on, on the date of the wedding, you present them with a new contract. No, that is not true. That well, is when did you... have it incorrect. When, just a second. When did you give them, because you said that the problem which caused the police I'll to come... Too. Just a second. She, I don't understand. Before I selected the very last venue, she was on FaceTime with me, looking at the venue with me, because I informed her I've never worked with this venue. I don't know anything about the venue. I told her that the best thing for her is to postpone her wedding. She was already behind in payments. This is her third venue. Just a second. She paid you almost the entire $20,000. She paid it in know. March. Shh. In <laughs> March. Doesn't matter. She paid you almost the entire... No, 30 days the before her Just wedding. That's what you're not hearing. I'm not looking at you. <sighs> yeah. 
before her wedding, she paid you almost the entire amount of the $20,000 that she originally gave you as a budget before the wedding. If you look at the contract, it says that you're going to make monthly payments so that we can adequately plan your wedding. You booked me back in 2021, almost a year before your wedding. The wedding was to be planned over the course of that year. The initial venue that I have worked with that I know is reputable, she ended up not paying the deposit on time, so they had to move forward with another date. After that, I didn't get any payments from her until March when she got her tax return. And then at that time, I was forced with less than 60 days to try to find another venue, in which I did, which was our, put, our event, event space. And then a pipe busted in that event space. And then I was forced to find another venue for her. I told her back in January, the top of the year, you need to postpone your wedding. Before invitations went out, before of all of that, when she was having troubles with her payment plan, I advised her as a professional, I think you should postpone your wedding date. You may talk a lot, but the bottom line is you're the expert. Uncross your arms. You're the well, expert. I'm the expert. You're, I'm, you're, 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 try, you're trying to talk over me? Beginning. You're trying to talk over me? No, I'm not. Good. So you're the expert. She's out of town. The reason that she selects a wedding planner in Las Vegas is because you're supposed to know whether or not the venue that you recommend is able to take care of the party you book. You may say to her, I don't uncross. You may say to her, I don't know anything about the venue, but that's your job. You're supposed to know about the venue. When I told her in the first place that she needed to postpone her wedding, that was my professional you mean that's, advice. You, no, no, that's not what she hired you for, to tell you to postpone her wedding. She hired you to plan her wedding, not to give her advice yes, whether or not... Also are you, to you're me. trying to talk over me. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You have to understand there are certain things that you did. Okay. You got out the invitations. That's a great thing. I assume you got a DJ. That's great. All of those things. The wedding itself, to me, was problematic. If my wedding ended with the police coming to the venue, and it turned out that the venue was one where you weren't allowed to have that kind of an event, I would be annoyed Again, at the they wedding. they were allowed oh, just to have a wedding. No, they weren't. The police officer... The contract clearly states that. I don't care what it states. That's not what the police officer Shh. said. You, and you uh, know you, because you have a police I don't care what it states. No, I don't care what it states. Out. You started to tell me before that the reason the police came there is because there was an altercation about you giving her another contract on that date, and there were words outside, and people People were complaining, other people who were no, in the air. That's not what I said. What did you say? The night before her wedding, I explained to her. I, I, well, I want to know what's happened on the date that's of the wedding. About to Just tell a second. You. Can you let me finish so I can No, I want you to go because I have a limited amount of time and I'm getting very old. I thought what you said to me, and you're going to read this back, is that the reason the police were drawn to the venue is because of the arguments outside. Correct. With her. Let's read that That's back. That's what I just, just said. A, that was on the date of the wedding. Correct. You got married. Mm hmm And you're happy. And you had of people course, at the wedding. Got a free wedding. And you. Twenty thousand dollars. <gasps> you you're almost done. <gasps> Do you understand? You're almost finished. Go ahead. We were brought up on the radar because the other businesses in the vicinity where the event took place had complained. There was a lot of altercation back and forth outside of the event because she didn't agree to sign the payment plan. Okay. So the reason that you said, let's go back, that the police came to the venue and then shut it down because it wasn't allowed to be used for what it was used for was because there were altercations about this second contract. No, that's not the contract we were having an altercation about. That's what I'm trying to... Oh, just a second. On the day of the wedding, Miss Gordon, did you present her with a new contract to sign. That's either a yes, yes or a no. Yes, I did, but not for the venue. That's I don't... I'm... It's not for the venue. I didn't say okay. it was for the venue. Yes. On, the, on the day of her wedding, did you present her with a new contract? The answer is yes. yes. You said you had discussed that with her the night before? Correct. And uncross. Oh, sorry. And the night before, did she agree to sign... Yes, she Just did. a second. A new contract? Yes, she did. Okay. 
And the new contract provided for what? The new contract that she was supposed to sign... Provided for what? Provided for the remainder balance of the $23,681 that her wedding actually cost. Just because she had only paid $19,000... You have the sheet, so I don't I have, have the exact it. number. I have Correct. So, since she had only paid that amount and the total expenses for her wedding were $23,681, okay. so the and night so before... What? She agreed so, so to make a payment plan with me to extend her payments beyond her wedding date to pay off this and remaining is that, balance. And is that what she agreed to on the phone? Is that what you're saying to Correct. me? Correct. She agreed with she you agreed on... If we... Shh. She agreed on the phone to pay you the additional $3,500 or $4,000, and she agreed to pay it over time. Correct. And that was Friday night. Correct. And then she got to the wedding. Correct. And... At what point did you present her with the new contract? At what point in the event? Upon her arrival to the reception venue. Now, what happened when you got to the reception venue? You'd already gotten through the ceremony, so you're already married. What time did you get to reception? Um, so, the reception was supposed to start at 5. Thanks, so it, was yeah. it was supposed to start at 5. But when we got there, she wasn't even done decorating. All of my family stayed outside for another hour, including my grandmother, my grandpa. We waited in cars. <laughs> Okay. Said, it was supposed to start at 5. At 5. This venue that I have here someplace, you have it? I think it was supposed to start at 5.30 and end at 10.30 for the concert. Okay. Thank you. Was it supposed to start at 5.30? Yes. What happened at 5.30, Ms. Gordon? I presented her with the contract, yeah. and then she refused to sign it. Her guests were waiting outside because she was refusing to sign it. When she refused to sign it, because our agreement was she was going to sign the agreement okay. before we started the reception. When she said that she did not want to start the reception, I responded and I said, we will pack all of this up and my staff and I will leave because now we're not being paid for our services. What time did the police arrive? I'm telling you, I would be... Furious if I spent $20,000 for a wedding and my evening ended by the police having my guests leave. Furious! Wedding planner Tara Gordon has accused her former clients, Beatrice Jackson and Nicholas Smith, of refusing to pay the remaining wedding balance. Beatrice and Nicholas claim Tara booked an illegal venue for their reception. So, what time did the police arrive? The police arrived at 9.30. And did the police tell everyone to leave? Yes, they did. And told everyone that they had to leave? They arrived and they told me that everyone had to leave. Whether they told you or whether yes. they told them. Yes. They said the place had to be clear. Correct. And that was an hour before the termination of the event. So, at the end, the event was... The event was supposed to end at 10.30. Police arrived at 9.30. That's according to you. That's an hour short of the event time she was supposed to have at the venue. No, so the event was supposed to end at 9.30. This is her um, timeline of no. events that was supposed to no. take place. No, this is the contract. That's, That's the time it. that I have the venue, too. I have to clean up. The agreed-upon timeline is here. The wedding was supposed S to end at 9.30, S giving me an hour to clean up. I'll take a look at what you have. I'm just telling you that this is the signed contract. That's it says between me and the venue, because they were giving me an extra hour to clean up. That doesn't say that in here. Because I booked it for a timeline. I booked it from 5.30 to 10.30. I outline everything that takes Just place. It ended at the last song of the night was at 9.30. And she went through the last song. We made it through the last song of the night on time. Could I take a look at that? I just can't wait till it's my turn. Well, the last song of the night was supposed to start at 9.30. Yes, and it started earlier oh. because we made it through and she was done dancing. And by the time the police came, it was just mingling and dancing going on. So she had made it through her entire <laughs> wedding reception is what I'm trying to state. Yes, Mr. Cox. Please, please. Hey, Arthur, I'm back. That's not true. The police actually came at 9 o'clock and... Were you there? I was the, the DJ. DJ. You were the DJ? Yes, ma'am. Oh. That didn't get paid. Don't... Oh, he got don't paid. He got paid. speak. So the police arrived at 9 o'clock. That's correct. And what happened when they arrived, Mr. Cox? So By the way, did you know them before the wedding? No, ma'am. Did you know her before the wedding? Just conversation that we had via Facebook or telephone. 
No, he did not know I, me. So no. Prior Just, to I'm wedding. not speak. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to him. She booked your services. Yes, ma'am. And how much were your services for the night? My DJing services were 500. Were you paid? No, ma'am. What happened when the police arrived? The police came, asked everyone to leave. Do you know anything about this venue space where the wedding took place? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about it. It's a storefront. So are a lot of venues in Las Vegas. Your case is dismissed. Do you understand? This is not a free-for-all. As far as I'm concerned, you got almost exactly what her budget called for. And I have one vendor that wasn't paid. Because she didn't pay. It's clear. Well, how do I know that you paid the other vendors? At least I know one vendor that you didn't pay. And she it's paid right almost $20,000. They got paid because... She... <laughs> okay. I have two things. I have one vendor that's here that wasn't paid. You were paid almost $20,000. The balance, part of it, is for your fee. Part of it that is for... That my fee was not... <sighs> Are you saying that part of this money that you're suing for, this $4,000, was not part of your fee? The $4,000 that I'm suing for is part of my fee. Of course, that's what I said. So part of that money was for your fee, and part of it was for vendors. I have one vendor here who says he wasn't paid. Well, I have receipts from other vendors, if you like to see. No, I just... I know you had a lot of vendors, but you didn't pay him. He's the only body. I didn't pay him body. because she didn't pay me. <laughs> it's clear. <laughs> yeah. She didn't pay me enough money ahead, to pay her venue. I just saw... I have here proof of how much every item in her wedding cost, which exceeded the $19,000 that she paid. Clearly, she owes more money. It's... That's the facts of the matter. She owes more money to She's what her wedding She's countersuing you for ruining her wedding because you booked it at a venue that wasn't allowed to have a wedding. She's right. got a counterclaim for far more than your claim. Bottom line is, she picked a wedding planner, she picked a venue, she tacitly approved this change of venue, both of you had, had to at the last minute, but you did that relying on the wedding planner to find a venue that was capable to hold the event. And it wasn't. It wasn't. That's your job. Your job is to find an appropriate place so that the police don't raid a wedding a half hour before it's over. That's not the way a wedding is supposed to end. So what I want you to tell me is you're suing her for $4,300. How much of that $4,300 is your fee? $2,000. And you didn't pay him? No. So that's 23, 24 minus 500. You didn't pay him because you have to pay him. I pay him. Part well, of it was paid. to pay him. I'm deducting it. Okay. I'm not paying you for your fee. Okay. You booked the wrong space for your fee. So far, I have 1825. Other than the DJ, who else didn't you pay? I'm very clear. Come on. Other than the DJ, he's going to tell me. The DJ is going to tell me. Other than the DJ, who else didn't you pay? Mr. Cox, could you stand up, please? <laughs> you seem to want to tell me something. And since you didn't know either one of these parties, I'm going to let you tell me. Do you know any other vendor other than you? who wasn't paid. The bartender also was not paid. Bartender. That's correct. Which is his wife. That's correct. I don't care if it was his wife or not. It was the bartender. Right, but what I'm, I'm saying the was the bar was just included. Just say, how much were you supposed to pay the bartender? The bar and the bartender came with him. He offered to do the bar mm -hmm. and to DJ because his pipe busted. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, he said, I'll bring my bar and I'll do a cash bar, mm -hmm. meaning oh, that... that's because a bar you can't have for $500. So right, we'll do a cash bar. Right, but he was doing a cash... A cash mm -hmm. Correct. Did you do a cash bar? Is yes, that... ma'am, I did. Okay. So you made some money off the cash bar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now you can sit. So what you paid him was five hundred dollars for both, and one fifty for the bar. Six fifty total. That's what he charged them outside of the wedding. This is a very easy case for me. You were paid almost twenty thousand dollars. I wasn't paid anything. I was yes. paid two thousand dollars. And I would feel doubly furious if, on the day of my wedding, as a new bride of an hour, the event planner said to me. You can't go in unless you sign this contract modifying our first contract. The contract was I, not I, to modify. Your case is dismissed. Contract. We're done. Okay. This court is adjourned. So is your counterclaim. There are some things that I realized that, you know, I could have done better. Basically, 10 days before the wedding, add additional $4,000 on top of $20,000. That never happened. It was just her way of just trying to come up on more money, in my opinion. At the end of the day, she had got her wedding. 
I'm actually sometimes surprised at professionals like this woman, who is an event planner, has a reputation. She was almost fully compensated for this event. And the wedding was, if it were my wedding, I would say, you know, it's ruined by having a police shut it down. <laughs> we had a wedding a month ago. Mm -hmm. What would you think of the police? You would not be happy if you paid any amount of money to a professional and had that happen. I really thought it was outrageous. The whole thing was just tacky, waiting outside the venue when she got there from the ceremony, and before she could go in, yeah. she had to sign the contract. That's really not what you do as a professional. Bad business. Annabelle Barone is suing her ex-boyfriend, Asael Arteaga, for a loan. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2060, Baron versus Arteaga. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Baron, case is not a very difficult one. You've met Mr. Arteaga? Arteaga. Now take your hands out of your pockets. At a bar? Yes. When? Back in June of 2021. Did you ever live together? Uh, no. You always maintained your own residence and he his? Yes, the apartment I owned was always underneath my name. But he never lived there? No. Good. But you bought a car. Yes. In what month and year did you buy a car? I ordered a Tesla back in, if I'm not mistaken, May. And I... May of what year? May of 2021. Was it a new car? Yes. Give me a rough number. How much was it? Out the door, 72000 And what color did you order? Black. This is what the case is about, and it's going to take me very, very little time to resolve the case. You ordered the $72,000 car in black, and because of whatever strange reason, you wanted the car wrapped. Now, I think most people know what that means, and I think I know what that means. That means you take a perfectly good car and you put a different finish on it. Is that what it means? Yes. You buy a car that has a nice, shiny finish and looks clean, and then you put something on it that, I don't know, looks like it's been sitting out under a volcano. <laughs> I guess you could say that. What? I guess you could say that. I just did. <laughs> And that cost money. It cost an additional, I think, according to the papers that I read, $3,800. No, it's $3,950. How much? 3950 And you had some of that money, but you gave him, transferred to him, $1,800 on your credit card. Yeah, so it was an agreement made between... No, no, I didn't ask you... Mm -hmm. I didn't... You transferred to him $1,800 towards this wrap on his car. I made the payment for him. You made the payment for him on a credit card? Yes. And according to you, your arrangement was that he would pay you back monthly 100 bucks. Correct. You don't dispute that. She offered. Yeah, she offered. And you did, in fact, on three separate months, pay her back $100. Yes. And that means that, in your view, it was a loan. Well, it was more of a gift. Well, then why would you pay her back $100 a month, Mr. Artiega? Because our finances are much different. She what do you mean? You... I was getting a car. I ordered a car, so it was a gift for me. Because she already knew that I was looking for a PPF, which is a paint protection film. Listen, so I'm more... Listen to me. Yeah. You're not answering my question. You're doing a dance around my question. If it was a gift to you, this $1,800 towards the wrap for your car, why did you pay her back $300? To help her out. Yeah. And then you stopped, because that sounds ridiculous. You still have the Tesla? I still do. Yes. You making payments on it? Yes, ma'am. Good. What kind of work do you do? I'm an electrical superintendent. Expensive car. Indeed it is. You're a single guy? Yes. That's what single guys do with their money. Tell me why you stopped paying her back, Mr. Artiega. Things got sour very quick. Follow so me. things got sour with the relationship? Yes. Okay. And is that when you stopped paying her? Yes. Good. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,500 is what he owes you for the balance of the loan. Thank okay. you. We're done. This court is adjourned. We broke up. It was a nasty breakup. Um, there was bad feelings and tensions between the both of us. It was a bad breakup, yes, but there's a lot more details to it. It was just out of pettiness at the end of the day. Because she caused a lot of rift. I'm just not going to loan out money to just anyone from here on out. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. And I'm really happy I get my $1,500 back. 
Now that we've been here for a little while and I've been learning from you and all these cases that we've seen, still, rule number one, never give a boyfriend money and expect to ever see it again. <laughs> you will never see it again. It gets messy, it gets entangled, and we see it time and time again. So it's just hits even harder at home. Have you noticed, Sarah, that it's probably uh, 80-20 that women give money to boyfriends? At least what we've seen here, yes. So it, it, you know, and if this is a microcosm of the world, and I don't know what that is, I haven't been able to figure it out. I've been doing this kind of business for 30 years, and I can't figure out why. Perfectly lovely young woman, guy's buying a $72,000 car and says, hey, babe, I'm short $1,800. Well, if you're short $1,800, buy a cheaper car. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are cars that cost less than $72,000. Anyway. But women should be smarter and they, not uh, agree to do smarter. that. They uh, ought to make mandatory watching these cases <laughs> as part of a growing up process. A lot of great life lessons, <laughs> yes. for sure. Case 2073, Joseph versus Williams. All parties, please step forward. Donnell Joseph is suing his niece, Tina Williams, and his sister, Martha Williams, for personal property. Mr. Joseph, these two ladies are your half-sisters? My half-sister and her and daughter, her... my niece. So... What's your first name? Ma Martha Williams. Martha is your half-sister. Yes. And your first name? Tina. Tina is your niece. Yes. And you and Martha had the same mother. Yes. Your mother had a house. The house was in her name. Your mother passed away in the early 70s. Yes. At that time, she was married to your father, not your father, correct? No. And your father lived in the house until he died. Yes. And he died in what year? 2018. Somehow, the house, which had been in your mother's name, never went through a probate process. So, as far as the law was concerned, the house remained in her name. It never went to her surviving spouse or her children when she passed away in the early 70s. What I'm reading is when your father passed away in 2018, the house sort of remained vacant for a while. For how long? Since he passed away. So nobody's lived there. Correct. And you knew your father passed away, I assume? Yes. And you knew your mother passed away? Yes. And after your mother passed away, she passed away in 1971 or 1972, yes. did you ever visit with your father in that house? I visit with my father. I lived in the house. From when to when? Well, I lived in the house 1963 until, like, 72, and I start moving out. But I will still go well, back to the house because it's no, my no, no. family home. I want to know... The last time, Mr. Joseph, you lived in the house? 1993. So, almost 30 years ago. And where have you been the last 30 years? I've been in New York. I've been incarcerated. You've been incarcerated from when to when? 93 to 2012. So, 1993 is when you last lived in the house? Correct. But you were released from prison in 2012? Yes. So, for the last 10 years, you have not been back to the house. I've been back to the house, but not living there as a resident. Wait, okay. So for 10 years... Right. As an adult, how old are you? I'm 64. As an adult, from age 54 to 64, you had access to the house, visited your father in the house. Right. Not before then. Right. Okay, and you haven't lived there full-time in decades. Correct. This is what your lawsuit wants. You had... 10 years after you were released from prison to go and get these treasures. And you didn't do it. Because my father's house was like the treasure of all his children's property. As long as he has... As long as he had a bicycle yes. or a Boy Scout book. Let's Am start I... being real. Okay. Donnell Joseph claims his niece, Tina Williams, and his sister, Martha Williams, threw away his personal belongings. Tina and Martha are countersuing for the cost of a cleaning crew. The lawsuit is seeking $10,000. Yes. Because, according to you, the defendants disposed of your property that was invaluable. And I'm going to describe the property that you say was invaluable. A 1911 Boy Scout handbook... Yes. ...that you treasure. Yes. You should have taken it out of the house in 30 years if you treasured it. A mountain bike purchased in what year? 
was it 71 or 72 around there? I know it was a three spirit, ten spirit I got. That was in 1970 in the Univega. You wanted it, this 50 year old mountain bike? You should have taken it over the last 10 years. A vintage reel to reel tape player. Yes. Do you know how many of those I threw in the trash? Do you have any idea how many of those I threw in the trash? You got those a half a century ago. Oh my God, I remember them. Big reels and how excited we were. You could talk into a microphone and, and then you could hear your voice come back. And then all of a sudden you got a phone. You could do that, the same thing. So everybody took these things and they couldn't find enough places to dispose of them. It's not vintage anything. It's a piece of trash. Can I speak, Your Honor? About what? Okay, the real to real tapes, right? Some of the tapes had speakings of my brother and Martha's daughter. Then you the should have taken them with you in 40 years. If they were treasures of yours, sir, and you're 64 years old, I would want those treasures around me. And you had 10 years after you were released from prison to go and get these treasures. And you didn't do it. You because, just left them in your father's house. Because my father's house was like the treasure of all his children's property. Okay. This is how we connected to our father, because everybody has left, everybody has died. So as long as he has... As long piece, as he had a bicycle? As long as he as had, a, as piece, had a bicycle had, or a Boy Scout book. Let's, the Boy let's, Scout let's, book let's was handed down real. to me let's from my father. Let's start my, being real. Okay. Okay, let's start being real. Okay. And the first draft of my published manuscript. Yes. Why didn't you take that with you? For safekeepings, I let my father hold it because Well, he, that's not a good idea, sir. How old was your father when he passed away? Oh, he was 88, but my father's mind was sharp as, as a tack. He kept okay. everything. If you wanted it, your father passed in 2018, is that what you're telling me? I couldn't get nothing out just, of the house. So I'm, I don't know whether you could or whether you couldn't. When did you make an... Just a second. When did you make an effort to remove your man... Forget about the bike, forget about reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, okay. forget about the nonsense. Your manuscript. When did you write this manuscript? I write it over a couple of years. It's the, it's the no, first no, no. draft of this book. It's the first draft of that book. This book. What, well, now you have the book. And but I needed to draft yet because the other draft I'm working on, on the second book that goes along with this book, I don't have certain notes and things that it's I not, had. It doesn't exist anymore. Yes, it doesn't. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And if you wanted it, you should have gotten it. In 2018, when your father died, you were out of prison. Where were you living? I was living in New York. And where did your father live? He lived in Los Angeles. Between 2012 and 2018, how many trips did you make to visit with your father? About three. And when did you publish that book? 2015. So you published that book during your father's lifetime? Yes. And if you needed the manuscript, you came to visit your father. A manuscript. It's this big. That's how big a manuscript is. Yes. Where were you living in New York? In Albany. You have your own apartment or your own home? House. Do you own or rent? Own. Um. When did you purchase it? My wife, we bought it together. It was in 2009. So you're married? Yes. Do you have children? No. So you and your wife purchased a house in 2009. How much did you pay for the house? 109000 Are you still living there? Yes. So you had plenty of room in the house. You had plenty of room for a manuscript, tapes, a manuscript that you were working on. You weren't working on the manuscript long distance. What I'm telling you, Mr. Joseph, is the things that you're suing for are nonsense. Okay. If things that you wanted that a grown-up man, 64 years old, gets if he wants them, it's not that you're a homeless, you have a home, a home that you purchased, you went to visit your father three times, anything of value. We're not talking about furniture and antiques right. and a grandfather clock. We're talking about things that can fit in a tissue box. Yes. You put them in your suitcase and take them with you if they're valuable. I couldn't visit California before that because of the conditions of my parole. So the times that I could go, I, I can go out there and I have to have... You told me you went out there three times. Yes. When your father was alive. When I, had, when I had permission to go. So I couldn't, after my father passed away, I couldn't go in the house because that would violate the probate thing, so I had permission no, no. to go you're into not, the house. You're not understanding me, Mr. Okay. Joseph. You're not understanding me. You went there three times after you were out of prison after you had a home, after you were married, when you went there with a suitcase, don't tell me violating your parole unless right, you told right. me that. And in the suitcase should have been when you returned from California to New York, small things 
of value that you say were invaluable to you, including a manuscript. Forget the bicycle. Forget the tape-to-tape -tape reel recorder. The tapes that you say were precious to you, if they belong to you, put them in a suitcase. So there's a lot more about this that I don't quite understand. Got, there's a lot about this that I don't quite understand. When got, your father passed away, who got the house? That's the house. Is sure. Your father passed away. What happened to the house? The house is still in probate. Oh, so okay. So during the probate thing, I had to have permission to take anything out of the house. Forget, I'm telling you the... I'm okay. tell, I've, I've answered your lawsuit, sir. Okay. I've answered your lawsuit. Thank you. That you're a 64-year-old man, and if something that could fit in a tissue box was that precious to you when you visited your father and you had a home, you would have taken it with you when you left. Certain things I could take... Uh, this is not a tea dance. The property has lost this, but I lost a sister in this process. He said he was... And, it, and it, make, it makes no difference how this go. I lost a sister. This isn't the probate court. So I would suggest that you all take a deep breath and say, whatever it is, let it be finished. Don L. Joseph claims his niece, Tina Williams, and his sister, Martha Williams, threw away his personal belongings. Tina and Martha are countersuing for the cost of a cleaning crew. I asked you if the house is still in probate, which is unfortunate because people didn't take care of the business, who are the beneficiaries of the sale of the house? Me, my sister Lawanda, my half-brother, Justin Joseph, my sister Sherry's two sons. Okay. Let's try to clarify this. Are you the executor of the will? There's no will. I'm... The my executive. mom's the administrator of the probate. And I just got to be administrator. We had to go back and forth to court. We had no way of getting in and out of the house because we had no keys. Okay. And your father, I assume, had no will. He had no will. What's the value of the house? Well, we don't know because since Martha became the administrator... Just we a have second. What's the address of the house? My mom had the house appraised at 250 She's going to tell me. So the off-market says it's approximating 464000 It's a three-bed, one-bath, 858 square feet. And the estimate? The range is between four hundred and five fifteen. and 515 Ooh. Well, the family has a valuable asset that has yet to be divided after all this time. It's a good lesson for everybody out there. Make a will. Now you can tell Thank me. Thank you. <laughs> My grandma, which is their mother, she bought the house on her own uh, with my mom's last name, which is her dad's statement. It's her maiden name, who she was married to. We don't know if they were married. That's what we're going through in probate. It's a process. But the beneficiaries would be Donnell, my mom, and two heirs of a deceased sibling. Donnell has also been in jail for most of my life. He hasn't been to California at all, so I wanted to back that up as well. Well, he's not entitled to anything. Well, okay. If he wanted these items that were valuable to him, he should have taken them during his 64 years. The most safest place that I had in the world for my valuable well, that's behavior too bad. was if my If you father. want a home in New York with your wife and you had an opportunity to take these valuable things because you said you visited with your father after 2009, then you should have taken them. And don't tell me it was the safest place because... Not only the safest thing, but my yeah. father, he Zero. lost two sons. Zero. And the only thing that he Listen. had in, the, in his house is the things that was left over from his children. And to take anything that was of value away from his children would have hurt my father. I, so the Listen. safest place Mr. Joseph, all our properties. Mr. Joseph, you don't think you're going to prison hurt your father? Yes. Okay. Let's That's get, why I changed let's get my real. life around. Let's get real. Okay. You're not getting any money here. Okay. You're going to wait for probate, and in the probate procedure, which hopefully won't take forever, but it clearly can because people are irresponsible and don't create a will, it is likely that you will have part of the proceeds of this house. Likely. Only because if your mother passed away and if she was, in fact, married to your father or lived with him at that time in California, if there was a common-law relationship and they did have children together, then you, as a 
offspring would be entitled, if there was no will, to part of the proceeds of this house. Yes. When That's she all. bought the house, she bought it as a married woman. So when she didn't you, buy you it don't as have a to single listen. property. That's something, Mr. Joseph, you don't have to convince me of. You have to convince the probate judge of. Oh, okay. You also have a counterclaim that's ridiculous, and I'm not entertaining it. It's really just stupid. Stay with probate. When is the probate proceeding supposed to be finished? Well, we're going through a mandatory um, settlement. One thing I want to say, Your Honor, however this probate is, I want it to be known. The property has lost this, but I lost a sister in this process. He said he was. And, it, and it, make, it makes no difference how this go. I lost a sister. My niece, she's something isn't else. The I love my sister. This isn't the probate court. Mr. I love Joseph. my sister. This is not the probate court, Mr. Joseph. And I suggest that if you love your sister, she know I love her. Just a second. If you love your sister, and you're I don't sixty-four know how she years old, to me. and you're sixty-four, when you know I love you. Shh, Mr. Joseph. Mr. Joseph. Yes. I know you can get emotional in situations where family is involved and your sister clearly is sick because she's using I'm oxygen. Well, I just had liver surgery. Mr. Joseph, what I'm telling you is, if you have an opportunity in the probate court, I'm actually telling this to both you and Miss Williams, if you have an opportunity at your age and your stage to settle something that gives each of you something maybe less than you would get if somebody was disinherited. But at this stage in life, at 64 years old, somebody who just had liver surgery and someone who must rely on oxygen in order to breathe, my common sense tells me that what you do is not to give the whole thing away to lawyers who are there sucking up whatever profits there are going to be in this house. Because if the house is worth $200,000, you're going to get a bill for $140,000 for the probate administrator, for the lawyers, and you're going to wind up with zippity doo -dah. So I would suggest that you all take a deep breath and say, whatever it is, let it be finished. You have no case, Mr. Joseph. Rely on the probate system. Uh, I wish you good luck. I said um, your countersuit's ridiculous. And oh, I, was I have proof. I want to tell you something. Your countersuit for having to rehire somebody to move is ridiculous. I'm telling you, rely on the probate court. We are done here. Would you please let we... me uh, present my counter? No, I read it. I read it. I'm dismissing it on its face. We're done. This court is adjourned. All I can say is, it's, I love my sister. The this, this same thing that's happening, nothing. Whether it's a probate thing or not, that ain't gonna never change. I don't want to hear anything else. I'm always loving, because that's my sister. Let the probate court decide. You know, at 25, after doing season one of this show, I created and executed a will because this is a situation we've seen far too many times, and it's so unfortunate to see the breakdown of a family over something that could have been prevented had the mother, father, grandfather, grandmother created a will when they were alive to tell the rest of us how they'd prefer they... their property to be disposed of. It's fascinating to me that their mother is gone for 50 years. And for 50 years, that title to that house, which is a... Never you know, got flagged, never it, was... Nobody ever thought about it. Yeah. And the father lived there for 40 years. Must have at least paid the taxes, taxes and maintenance because on it. it did, absolutely. And then he's gone, and everybody is in this awful state of limbo. And you know what it is with all those siblings and half-siblings and grandchildren and whatever. Even if the house... She says she had it appraised for 250. Mm -hmm. You looked it up and you... It they, was much the more, but it's hard to tell. But even if it is, and it has to be divided with six people, mm -hmm. that's a substantial chunk of money. But it doesn't look like for either one of them it's life-altering money. He lives in a home. Mm -hmm. He has a wife. He looks as if he's OK since he's been released from prison. But he has health issues. Mm -hmm. His sister has health issues, and they're going to spend the last years of the... Stressed, <laughs> worried stressed, about this probate. angry. I mean, I saw how emotional mm -hmm. Mr. Joseph got. I love my sister. Well, if you love your sister, then... If That'll... you love your sister, then you don't sue her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand it anyway. <laughs> your advice is solid and sound. Yeah. Andrew Tallon, for the cost of a car he wrecked during an accident. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2163, Rocchio versus Talon. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Rocco, 
This is basically what the case is about. You and the defendant were in a relationship. You have one child together. And it is your claim that some three years ago, he took your car with your permission. You were living together at the time. He yes. took your car and had an accident. Correct, yes. And that was three years ago. And you want him to pay $5,000 on a car that Sarah has already checked, which is worth... Between $1,400 and $3,000. Which is worth a quarter of that. Do you understand? Correct, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I want you to forget about $5,000. So if he's responsible for anything for the car, he's responsible for what its value is, which is about 1400 bucks. How long had you been living together when he borrowed the car? About a year. Okay. And was your child born during that time? Yes. What month and year was the child born? August 2018. When was the first time that you asked Mr. Talon for money for this car that had been in an accident. After he was released from jail, he, ended, he got arrested from a previous warrant um, at the scene of the accident, uh, from, directly from the hospital. So when he was released from jail... What was the date of the accident? April 30th, 2019. And how long were you held in jail, sir? I believe June 11th or so, roughly almost six weeks. What was the warrant for? Domestic battery. Against whom? Against Eve. Against her? Against Eve. Yes, against her. Well, you were living together. Did you file another complaint after the accident? No, I didn't. There was a warrant from the initial complaint. And what year was that? That was around November of 2018. But you remained living together and you had a child together. Why didn't you just withdraw that case? I did withdraw it. I didn't realize that a warrant had been released until it was, until it was acted upon. Well, when he was arrested and he was held in jail, he contacted you, correct? Yes. Of course he did, because he said, what's going on? We're living together. We have a child. What's this warrant for domestic battery? It just took time for me to get it dismissed. No. What I'm asking you is, he contacted you. Yes. And when he was released in June of 2019, where did he go to live? Uh, he came back... For what period of time? About a month, maybe two months at the most. And you lived together as a couple with the baby. Yes. And how old was the baby at the time? He would have been about between six and eight months off the top of my head. And the two of you cared for him? Yes. And during that two or three month period, there was no discussion that you have in writing about paying back for the car? Not in writing. Not in writing. Yeah. Now, what happened after the two months? He began exhibiting behaviors that were the behaviors of somebody who was using drugs again. Um, he was clean for a long period of time, and he just... His attitude changed, his behaviors changed, and I decided that it was time for him to go back to his mother's house. And he did? Correct, yes. It was after a couple of months? Yes. So that would have been... And maybe August or September, is that right, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so in August or September. Did he continue to see his son? He did, yeah. I would, um, I would bring Eden down to his mother's house for them to have visits together. His mother has always been a safe spot for them to right. visit. And how long did you do that? Up until recently. We're pretty much... Recently, so you're talking yes. about 19, 20, 21. Yes. Right? And um, there was a period of time where... Because he was living with his mother at first, there was a period of time where I didn't know where he was living. I, it, was, it made me uncomfortable that I was bringing my son, even though they were visiting at his mother's house, it made me uncomfortable that he wouldn't let me know an address for him just in case anything happened, just in case, you know, anything, anything happened, basically. He, wouldn't, he didn't give me an address for me to find him or for me to know where Eden might be if anything were to happen. So what I'm getting is for three years after this accident, there was no request that you can demonstrate. Now, you weren't together, certainly, so for the last two years, you never went and filed claiming that he owed you money for the car. So, I, I Just did... Just Sorry. Is that correct? No, I did attempt to file several times, but I didn't have an address for him. I tried to file once for an address where you he have any, at his mother's. Do you have any proof of that? I do not. No. You continued to bring your son for visitation with his father. Correct. Which is a very easy thing to do. You're a smart enough gal. I'm yeah. gathering that. You bring a friend, you serve him personally with a summons and complaint. Yeah. So the answer is, for three years, you did nothing. Now I'm going to find out why, after three and a half years, you filed this complaint over a $1,400 car. 
The child is no longer in your custody. Temporary. The child is no longer in your custody. The child is in the physical custody of the paternal grandmother. And that is by court order. Yes. And they found that the child would be at risk in your custody. Yes. Eve Rocchio claims her ex-boyfriend, Andrew Tallon, owes for totaling her car. Andrew is countersuing for emotional distress and attorney fees after Eve took their son. Okay, you bring a friend, you serve him personally with a summons and complaint. So the answer is, for three years you did nothing. Now I'm going to find out why, after three and a half years, you filed this complaint over a $1,400 car. Now, Mr. Talon says in his cross-complaint that there came a time when you left the state, the jurisdiction, that was the child's home state. Yes. And when did you leave the jurisdiction? That was in September of 2021. And you went from where to where? We went from Florida. We stopped in South Carolina for a period of time. We had a little vacation before we had to go, because we were going to work, we were going to clear a property out for sale. So you left the jurisdiction with the child? Yes. Prior to that, Mr. Talon had been seeing the child regularly at his mother's house? Yes. Did you tell him you were leaving? Yes. What did he say when you told him you were leaving? He didn't really say anything. He just wanted to spend time with him, which he was, you know, they, they did spend time together before we left. Not I... before. After you left, you moved to New Jersey. I didn't move. I didn't move to New Jersey. What we did were... you do? So, like I said, we went there to liquidate a house that we have there. It took longer than expected. How long? It took about five months, six months. Things happened with the closing. Deals were made and fell through. Whatever. How long did you tell him you were going to be away? I was only supposed to be away for two weeks. That's a big deal, Miss Rockhill. That's a big deal. It is. Because if... He says, I'm taking Eden for a two-week vacation, if that's okay. I know you took him away. I'd like to take him away for a two-week holiday. And he goes away for six months. You wouldn't like that. I, I would not. You would not. Well, he's a parent just like you are. That's what the law says. The law says men, women treated just about equally when they have a child. If you said to him, I'm going away for six months, and he said, okay, well, then you agree to. But you said, we'll be away for two weeks. And it lasted longer. Yes, that's... The and during the time that it lasted longer, about six months longer than it was supposed to, what arrangements did you make for your son to see his father? They had video calls regularly. Um, I told him I would be back when, as soon as I could. Not I... just a second. So the answer is, you did not make any... Because he has a counterclaim here. Yes. And his counterclaim is for the fact that you took the child out of the jurisdiction and deprived him of the ability to see the child. Subsequently, due to circumstances, and I'm not sure what that is, the child is no longer in your custody. Temporary. The child is no longer in your custody. The child is in the physical custody of the paternal grandmother. Is that correct? And that is by court order? Yes. The beginning of that process was made in what month and year? July of 2022. Was that a child protective proceeding? It was, yes. And I assume that if there was a child protective proceeding that the court found that based upon whatever was alleged in the petition that was not brought by him but by the Department of Social Services or Child Welfare Administration, they found that the child would be at risk in your custody. Yes. And as a result of that, they took the child into care. And this is all stuff, because I've been here. I, you know, this, this, this is my bread and butter. Instead of placing the child in a strange foster home... They placed the child with the defendant's mother. Correct. For how long a period? 18 months? Indefinite. I, um, there's no specified period of time. However... Well, they have to... The court... If the court is placing a child through the state, unless you relinquish your parental rights, did you do that? No, I didn't. OK. Unless you relinquish your parental rights or the court terminated your parental rights, they have to review this case periodically to see whether either one of you, as the parents, are ready to assume custody of the child. Right? So when is this case going to be reviewed? I believe the next review is in February. February of this of year? this year, correct, yes. That's a reasonable answer, so that you do know. So that's the change in circumstance. Now, getting back, Miss Rockhill, to what motivated you after three years, after you gave him permission to drive the car and he had an accident, and you made up this whole 
baloney story in your complaint that says, police arrested Andrew at the scene of the accident because I had previously filed a domestic abuse charge against him and there was a warrant. But you were living together during the time that there was this outstanding warrant. You were living together and conceived a child with him. The child was already conceived. He was already born at the time of the domestic violence altercation. In he was about 2018? Born. In 2000, uh, the end of 2018, yes. He was born in August. The altercation happened, happened in November. So he was very young. But you reunited and were living together with him as a family. Yes. Right. The police arrested Andrew Ben on a domestic abuse charge, and there was a warrant. When Andrew was released from jail, he disappeared. So... That's what... I, just a second. That's what you say here. He disappeared. My car was fully paid off, and I had no liability insurance. Andrew refused to pay for my total car, and he refused to see our son. He moved and went into hiding. That's what you signed. That's your complaint. I tried to file the small claims case against him several times, but could not find his current address. Well, that's not true. You knew exactly where he was until you moved out of the jurisdiction to New Jersey for six months because he had been regularly seeing his son at his mother's house. But he wasn't living at his mother's house. It doesn't time. make any difference. That's not what I, you say here. I did he may not have been living there. House. He may not have wanted you to know where he was living. Well, he didn't, and that's well, why so I that's okay. against He doesn't have to tell you where he's living. Unless a judge orders him, he doesn't have to tell you where he's living. You were having visitation at his mother's house. So all of this stuff after the accident is all a bunch of baloney. So did there come a time when you were concerned that your son was using drugs? Um, That's there, either a yes or a yes. no. Yes. And was it at that time that you suggested she come and pick up Eden? I told her to pick him up from school. I didn't tell her to come pick up Eden and take off for five months. Eve Rockhill has accused her ex-boyfriend, Andrew Tallon, of totaling her car. Andrew claims Eve kept him from seeing their son. You knew exactly where he was until you moved. I didn't, though. He was not living at his mother's house at the time. That was just a place that he was visiting with Eden that I would bring him to. Perfect. So you would set the terms of that, and the terms were that he could see the child even without a court order because he was his father and had lived with him after he got out of jail. Yes. Lived with him, which you don't say here. After he got out of jail... But I, I didn't put that... I don't think you have a case. He drove the car with your permission. You were living together as a couple. You have a child together. Your case is dismissed. Now, I want you to tell me, sir, you have a counterclaim for... Her kidnapping your son, she left the jurisdiction. You call Child Protective Services. Yes, ma'am. Tell me when you call Child Protective Services, because that's the reason that this lawsuit came about. The last time I saw him before she left to stay with him was September 19th. Me and my family, we went to SeaWorld, and she was supposed to meet me. Uh, she said when we dropped off that he, she was going to meet me in Tampa. And when I called her, um, she said that she was in Jacksonville. She lives in Ocala, so she was, like, still, like, two hours north east of where she lived, and she wasn't in Tampa, so I just decided just to take him home rather than argue. I took him home, and the house was just disgusting. Beer cans filled up in the, in the trash cans. It just, the, the living conditions were troubling. Was there a neglect proceeding? For this? The baby. I had an interview with, with the uh, caseworker or the investigator initially. Were you there in court when yes, your mother yes, was granted? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Was Miss Rockhill? Yes, she was there, too. You see your son regularly? Yes, ma'am. So the period of time when you did not see him was a six-month period, is that right? That was the second time. Yeah, it, was, it happened the year, bef the year prior. She did it before, too, where she removed him from school. Since I moved home in 2019, we've shared custody periodically until she decides that she wants to take him and not allow me to see him or for whatever reason. Just I think it's a control thing. And this was the second time. My counterclaim is for the second time. How long was the first time? Roughly the same time, five months, six months. Where did you go the first time? I didn't go anywhere. I actually received a text from his mother, Angel, um, to come pick up Eden. Andrew was using drugs again, and come pick up Eden would be easiest to do it while he was at school to avoid potentially traumatizing Eden. Did you send that email? I did not send her an email, no. Not a, a text. text message. I sent her a text message. Okay, just a second. You're his mother. Come. 
You sent her a text message. That's not something that she would make up because I'm going to ask to see it. She's going to show me. So did there come a time when you were concerned that your son was using drugs? Um, That's no. either a yes or a yes. no. Yes. And was it at that time that you suggested she come and pick up Eden? I told her to pick him up from school. I didn't tell her to come pick up Eden and take off for five months. I didn't take oh, off. Oh, OK. But you told her to pick him up from school. Yes. He knew where to find me. I was at the same address. I didn't leave anywhere. Uh, he's known where we've lived the entire time. He could have Couldn't... come up and seen him. He, we could have met somewhere. I'm... Yeah. I don't know. You did, in fact, remove him the second I time for six, for six months. The second time, yes. I Not purposefully to keep him away from Andrew. We just, I mean, we had business to attend to, and it ended yeah. up taking a lot longer okay. than it now you see him, should have. Now you see him all the time. Is that right? I actually, I live back at home again. Once this happened, because... Just a I... second. So you live back at home with your mother? Yes, I see him every Since day. when? I've been living back at home for, I think, roughly a, a month or so. Where are you working? I work for a solar company. For how long? I, I went to jail for DUI last year. I got out. That's why I'm having to do the case plan because of my, my DUI. That was in like August 1st is when I started this job. OK, are you working? I am, yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm a dental assistant. Did you have a trial in the family court? Not yet. We're still awaiting adjudication. A full custody? Yes. But the child is with you under the auspices of Child Protective Services. Yes. Her trial is the 13th of February. For the neglect case? Yes. Is that correct? You have a lawyer there? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Your case against the respondent for the damage to the car three years ago is dismissed. Likewise, is your action against her for attorney's fees, the custody? Are you appearing in that custody case? I'm almost complete with my case plan. I will be there for that. Yes, ma'am. Good. So I suggest we not say anything nasty about each other yes, because there is always that strong probability that you're going to have to co-parent this child. It's never been a problem in the past. Good. Very good. Case is dismissed. Wait Thank up. you. This court is adjourned. I don't want to be a part of his life. I want him to have a part of his child's life, as I always have and have always done my best to make sure that he has. I Honestly, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I think she was just, maybe he was just trying to get back at me, maybe, maybe not. Unfortunately, you know, circumstances arose that I, I wasn't expecting. I feel like sometimes he was, my, our son was used in a way to hurt me. Things happened with the sale of the house and the closing of the house. Um, deals were dropped. Um, we were just trying to get it. We were just trying to get rid of it, and it took longer than expected. It's hard to see the fighting and the, you know, just the separation of the family. I was just worried, you know, I was in mom mode and I was I was worried because I know what he's capable of. I, I've been exposed to him while he was using, while he was exhibiting behaviors that would be damaging and traumatizing to Eden. It's my past. I mean, it's true, I'm not the same person, but. I just want to be the best parent I can be. I hope we can parent our son together. You know, Sarah, there are lots of tentacles in that case. There were? Yeah. But if you try to take all those tentacles that we really don't have jurisdiction over. I think that they said that custody per ongoing. is ongoing. Mm -hmm. If you remove all those tentacles, there was an accident three mm -hmm. years ago. And despite the fact that she really knew where he was, where he could be served, because she regularly brought the child over to him. And he said that for a good part of that time, she had 50-50 custody. Mm -hmm. She was perfectly comfortable with Eden staying with his paternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. Case was really about this car. Yeah. And he had an accident three years ago. They lived together. They slept together. They shared a child together. And now that he notified Child Protective Services of what he saw when he brought the child home, and she physically lost custody after an investigation, that's the motivation for filing this mm. now. She waited too long. He had her permission, yeah. drove the car. As far as I'm concerned, the only person that I ever feel sorry for in these things Daniel Gray is suing his former friend, Tony Woods, for car damages after a night of drinking and driving. Court, come to order. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2018, Gray versus Woods. Thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Everybody sober today? <laughs> yes? Man, yes, man. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Yeah. You? Yes, I'm sober. Yes? Oh, uh, yeah. Most definitely. Everybody. <laughs> okay, good. You two gentlemen know each other. You went out for an evening. I assume there was some drinking, and your car got totaled. Yes, ma'am. It is your claim that the defendant was driving your car 
when it got totaled. Yes. The defendant says, oh, he was drinking a little bit, but he says that you don't remember, because you were so blotto, that you were driving. <laughs> right? Yes. So that's what the case is about. Simple. Two drunks, nobody knows who was driving the car when it got totaled. <laughs> Let's see if we can decipher it. If we can't, I may not care. <laughs> because you're not supposed to be in a car when you're drunk. Otherwise, you can kill a lot of people, as we all know, right? Yes, ma'am. Want to drive drunk and kill yourself, that's one thing, right? You take a lot of other people down, and sometimes you make it out. So you have to be understanding to the fact that the judicial system really doesn't give a rat's behind if the two of you were drunk and in a car, and neither one of you was together enough to know who was driving the car. Yeah. When did this incident happen? It was November 27th, 2021. How long have you known Mr. Woods, Mr. Gray? I've known Mr. Woods about 20 years, I would say. So you've known him since you were kids? Yeah, since high school. And you have gone out frequently? Yes. Does he come to your house? Yes. You go to his house? Occasionally, yes. Occasionally. And where were you going on the 27th of November? We were going downtown Ann Arbor to attend some festivities from the Michigan versus Ohio State football game. To a football event. Yeah. How did Mr. Woods get downtown? Well, yeah, and I got dropped off. By whom? Uh, my friend. Friend's name? Um, Lauren. And where did she drop you off? Um, she dropped me off in front of the Starbucks downtown where they were waiting, because they were drunk. I didn't drink. They Just a second. Lauren dropped you off at Starbucks. Where were you supposed to go from Starbucks? We were supposed to go um, to a club and hang out after the game. So you first went to the game? No, they went downtown right after the game, and I came to meet up to hang out. So it was all after the game? Yes, yes, yes. What time did Lauren drop Mr. Woods off at Starbucks? I would say it was around, like, 3 Four o'clock. In the afternoon? I believe so. What time did Lauren drop you off? It had to be about 5 30, 6 o'clock. And when you say it had to be 5 30 or 6 o'clock, how do you know that? Because the game was over. I don't know. I don't watch football, so I don't know when it starts and when it finished. Do you remember what time the game finished? No, I don't remember exactly. Okay, the time. so let's say Lauren dropped you off at 5 30. How did you set the time for Mr. Woods to meet you so that he could join your party? The game is over different times. Did you text him? Did he call you? So on the way, we had left from my barbershop, me and my witness here, Mo Chow. So you weren't at the game. You were in a barbershop. Yeah, we were at the barbershop at first. We watched the game. Oh, you watched... So at, you didn't go to the game. We didn't attend the actual game, no. Okay. We watched the game at the How bar many people, you, Mohammed, and who else watched the game at the barbershop? I mean, the barbershop was full of... We were still working at the time. We had left work after the game was over to go downtown to... Were you watching the game or were you working? I was doing both. Mm. I would have hated to be your last haircut. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it wasn't a lot of people there because that was the biggest game of Michigan's season, the last game, Ohio State. It's a big rivalry, so nobody was at our barbershop. So really. it was just party? Mm. It was... It was just party. You know, I'm old, yeah. so, you know... <laughs> It was just party. You said, uh, Mohammed. It was a party. Yeah. It was just party. Okay. So you left the barbershop, but how did you find out to meet them at the Starbucks? Uh, we have been communicating through text. So you knew what time they were leaving the barbershop, and then you got uh, dropped off. Actually, now, what were you doing with Lauren? I was waiting to get to them. Where were you before? I was at home. I watched the game at home. With Lauren? No, with myself. Well, how'd you get Lauren to take you to Starbucks? Oh, I just asked her and gave her some gas money. Okay, so now you're at Starbucks, you meet up, and who's driving? I was driving. Okay, and that would have been a mistake. Excuse me? That would have been a mistake. I wouldn't get behind the wheel of a car, sir, if I was at a party all afternoon watching a big uh, football game. Uh, Ma'am, I wasn't at a party. I was at my barbershop. I know you were at your barbershop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah look at Mohammed. I know you were at your barbershop, sir. There have been any drinking going on at that time. There was no drinking in the barbershop, Mohammed? Oh. There was there was people participating. Some people weren't. Some people okay. were. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't participating. All righty. Okay. So now you go from this party in the barbershop all afternoon from this very big game, and you pick him up, and where were you going? At that point, we decided to go to a bar. Where was the bar? I'm not familiar with downtown Ann Arbor area, but, like, it was a bar that was suggested by... Stand up next to him. He's not familiar with a whole lot of things. You suggested a particular bar, Mohammed? Yeah, uh, the... 
How far is that from the Starbucks where he was dropped off? About a couple blocks over. Okay, and you were in the car? I was in the car. Were you sitting in the front or the back when you picked up Mr. Woods? I was sitting in the passenger seat at this point. So Mr. Woods got in the back? Yes, he did. And you were going a couple of blocks to the bar? Yeah. Step by step, what happened next? So tra traffic is jam-packed down there, so we're really just inching to the bar. We get to the bar, we go inside, we have a couple drinks. Um, okay, so now it may be 6 o'clock, yeah. 6.30? Yeah. Dark outside. And you have a couple of drinks at the bar? A couple of drinks, yeah. What were you drinking? I was drinking water. That's not a drink that they like to serve at a bar. I'm, I was a designated driver, so... Okay. I, well, after we left the bar. Okay, so you were the designated driver, yeah. and Mr. Gray was drinking? Yes. What was he drinking? I don't remember what his drink is. You remember what you were drinking? Yes, ma'am. What? I had one beer. <laughs> okay. Even he can't keep a straight face. You know, it's, it's hard. It just, don't speak. Now, you were the designated driver. When were you designated the designated driver? Well... So think very careful. Before you answer my questions, you know. Okay. I'm already two steps ahead of this game. I've, I've watched, when were you... Yeah. I've watched you on TV, yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> when were you designated the designated driver? When we left the bar, I was the designated driver. No, no. So it was when you left the bar? Yes. And who designated you the designated driver? Well, I, I kind of designated myself. I'm pretty familiar with the Ann Arbor area. It's actually my idea to go downtown, so... So you asked Mr. Gray if you could drive? Yeah, I thought it was, would be the best idea. And Mr. Gray said okay? Yes, he did. So you drove. And where were you going from the bar? To another bar. Better pickings at the other bar? Uh, just bar hopping, you know, college, downtown, football. Okay, and what's the name of that bar? Uh, where do we go from there? No, no, no! Speak as I look at you. The name of the other bar. Okay, now he helped you with that, right? Love, yeah, he jogged my memory a little bit. He I jogged your memory. Yeah. So if he knew the bar, why did you have to be the designated driver? I don't think I understand your question. It's very easy. You said you were the designated driver because you know that area. Right, I'm, I'm saying I didn't remember and what he... bar we went to. I'm very familiar with the area. I just didn't remember what bar we were going to that night. Okay. What happened when you got to the second bar? We had some more drinks and... The, um... We had some more drinks? Yes. What was Mr. Gray drinking? You know, I don't... I was talking to some other friends that I met up with there. He was off doing his own thing. I don't remember what he was drinking. What were you drinking? Water still at this point. Water. Yeah. I like to stay hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> when I come out of the restroom, my car is gone. So I call him and he, he's not answering the phone. So I'm sitting at the shop waiting. He called me and say, yo, man, you gonna kill me, man. I just, I just crashed your car. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, bro. Daniel Gray claims his former friend, Tony Woods, drove drunk and crashed his car. Tony says Daniel was the one driving drunk and wrecked his own car. Okay, so now you had a couple of drinks. You had another glass of water. Yes. Mr. Gray and Mr. Woods both were drinking alcohol. And what happened next? We left there. We went to get something to eat. At this, Where did you go to eat? We went to, what's the name of that place? Uh, I don't know the name of the place, and he's not going to tell you. It's, it's a hot dog place. It's right around the corner from where we was drinking. And then what happened there? We got something to eat. Okay, uh, do you remember what time that was? You know, I, I really don't. Well, you've been already to... Two a bars bar, and a yeah. place to eat. So, and if you started out at 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. it had to be closer to 9 or 10 o'clock. Right, yeah. Okay, then what happened? Came out of the restaurant. And? And, uh, You remember what you had at the restaurant? I had some waffle fries. And do you remember what Mr. Gray ate? He had a hot dog. And do you remember what Mr. Woods ate? He also had a hot dog. Good. So, you came out of the restaurant. Do you remember who paid the bill? I think we all paid separately. Okay, so now you come out of the restaurant. Yeah, we come out the restaurant. We had eight already. And this one, uh, Mr. Woods over here started horse playing a little bit, charged at me from across the street. You know, I tried to get him. But just a second. Okay. How did he get across the street? Well, the restaurant was across the street. We parked across the street from the restaurant. Okay, I got so it. So I had already got back to the car. Okay. And Mr. Woods over here started horse playing, and he ran across the street and tried tackling me, and he got me around my waist. I tried to put him in a headlock, but. You see the size of his head. <laughs> um, and it, it, that just continued throughout the night, this horse playing. No, no, no. So he's horse playing with you. Right. But you get into the car. 
You said if you continued all during the night. What I want to know is, from the place where they got hot dogs and you mm -hmm. got waffle fries, mm -hmm. did you get back into the car? We did get back into the car. We went one more place. Okay. Now, when you got back into the car after the two dogs and the fries, mm -hmm. who was driving? At that point, I think I was still driving. Not think. I, I don't want to think. I believe I was driving. I dropped myself off to my next destination because I separated from them, too. You went to one other place? Uh, yeah. With them? With the three of them, yes. And when you got to the other place, you went in or you did not go in? I went inside, yeah. OK. Did you stay there? I did stay there. And what about the two of them? They went wherever they went. I don't Back to the barbershop, I believe. And you were the designated driver. Up into the So barbershop. you were drinking the water? Yes. And they were both drinking alcohol. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, what do you mean, yeah? Uh, <laughs> you go to at least two bars, maybe three. You have a whole afternoon of drinking at a barber shop. Not you, you were drinking water. Water, yeah. I don't know what then, they cook. Then you get dropped off. You was the designated driver. Now they're nowhere near home. So you knew one of them was going to be driving. Right. And as far as your testimony is concerned, you were left in the last place that you visited. They went out to go someplace else or go back to the barbershop. Right. Did you see them again that evening? Um... Uh, is not an answer. I mean, we're coming to court today. You know, it's not a photo shoot. You came here for testimony. I don't believe I seen them that night again. No, I'm just talking about that night. That's what we're talking about, that I... night. This is the night of the accident, the 27th of November, 2021. I didn't see them again. You're in a club. You don't know what happened. Now, when they dropped you off, did you go outside with them, or did you just stay in the club? I stayed inside. So you don't know anything else? What happened after that? But now you can sit. Thank you. OK. Now, your witness, the designated water-drinking driver, mm -hmm. has dropped himself off, and the two of you go outside. What happened? After he gets dropped off, we are parked at a bar, and... Just a second. He stays there. You get into the car, because you're going to another bar. No, not at this point. Where were you going? I was getting ready to go to my barbershop. He's not with you. Who was driving? I was driving at that point. Okay. And you were driving to take yourself back, according to you, to the barbershop. Yes. And then what happened? Okay, so we get to the barbershop, and I leave the car running. He's in the car with me. Just a sec. Got to the barbershop, and you left the car running for what reason? Because it was, it was cold outside. It was snow. It was... Uh, it's November. Well, what were you going to the barbershop for? I went to the barbershop because I needed to use the restroom. And the barbershop is close by to this last bar you were at? Yes. How close? Maybe like two miles. Okay. So you went to the barbershop. You left the car running and... So I go in to use the restroom and I leave the car running and Mr. Woods was sitting in the car still. So as I'm in the restroom, he comes in and starts knocking on the door and says that he had lost his phone when he had got out, out the car where we were parked at. Where? The last bar that we were at. I didn't actually go into the last bar. We was parked there. We were about to go in to, to meet up with him. What do you mean to meet up with him? He was with you. As he said, he, got, he met up with another friend. He didn't tell me that. He said you just dropped him off at the other bar and you weren't going in, just he was going in. You dropped him off. That's what he said. No, he went in. I understand he went in. I, I never went in the last bar. Okay, you didn't go, and neither did he. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm asking you. He said, I lost my phone someplace. No, where we were parked at, he, he got out the car for a second. I never got out the car. He got out the car for a second. And at What some was he point, doing when he got out of the car for a second? He thought we were about to go in, but I said, I told him that I needed to use the restroom, so he got back in the car. But at some point when he got out the car, he dropped his phone. So I told him I needed to use the restroom, so I go to my shop to use the restroom. I park the car. Got it. I get out. I leave the car running. I go in, use the restroom. He comes in, knocks on the door, telling me that, hey, yo, I lost my phone. Can I drive the car? Let me go pick it up real quick. And I tell him, no. Like, just wait. I'll be out in a second. So he leaves. I hear the door open and close. I'm thinking that he's just going to sit back in the car. So when I come out of the restroom, my car is gone. I call him, and... He, he's not answering the phone. So I keep calling, I keep calling. And then the next, like, 10 minutes later, he answers the phone. 
So I knew he went to go get his phone. He I, found his phone. Yes, and I'm I'm furious at this point because he just left me in my at shop. the barber shop. Yeah, in my car. So I tell him, you know, bring my car back right now. You know, he said I'm on my way. I'll be there in a minute. About 15 minutes later, he called me and say, Yo, man, you gonna kill me, man? I just I just crashed your car. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. Mm -hmm. And I had to walk all the way to the accident scene to the car where he crashed my car at. Now, you have an accident I, report? No, I don't have an accident report. Why? Be because we, we never called the police. That's because probably a good idea. Because he wasn't involved with another car. He just hit a pole. I understand that. That's still an accident report. The only reason you don't call the police is because both of you were drinking. Well, I, I wasn't driving the car at that time. Well, you were driving the car to the barbershop, right? Yes. From the last bar where you dropped Mohammed off, you were driving. Yes, I was not drunk, though, Yana. If you're not drinking, you know, it's sort of an interesting thing. Everybody's definition of drunk is different. Your friend Mohammed said that he was the designated driver, so he was just drinking water. That's what he said. That's what Mohammed said. Which suggests to me that we had a full day of drinking, starting at the barbershop, watching the game, from the game to two or three bars, then for a bite to eat. No. I wasn't drinking at the barbershop. I didn't start drinking until we got to the first bar. Okay, so now you started to drink at six o'clock. Now it's 10 o'clock and you've been drinking from one place to another. I'm just saying you got behind the wheel of the car and you had been drinking. Now, did you hit a pole? No, Your Honor. Okay, now you tell me your version of the events. How long was he in the restroom before you realized that you had dropped your phone? About five minutes. So now he's gone in to use the restroom. You go and look for your phone. You see how easy this is like fishing in a fish tank. Daniel Gray has accused his former friend, Tony Woods, of driving drunk and wrecking his car. Okay, now you tell me your version of the events. Okay, first off, I ain't eat no hot dog, so I never- You didn't what? Dog. I never had a hot dog. Never okay, hot dog. strike the hot dog. No hot dog. Whitney, it's true. Oh. He <laughs> denies record, the hot dog. I didn't dog. eat a hot dog either. Yeah, okay. Okay. He denies the hot okay, dog. Okay, so, so for, for what happened after they got in the car, first, they were very drunk. Just a second. You don't have to tell me. All three of you were drunk. I wasn't drunk yet. <laughs> okay. By the time the car got trashed, you were drunk. Let me tell you what I believe. Okay. So that you can pick it up from there. Okay. I believe that Mohammed was dropped off at the last bar. So there came a time at the end of the evening when it was just the two of you. I don't know who was driving. I don't know who was the passenger. But I believe that they dropped him off because otherwise Mohammed, who appears here as a witness today, would have had a better story because he says, I don't know what happened afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. because I wasn't there. So there was a time at the end of the evening that just the two of you were in the car. Okay. That's what I believe. Okay, can I tell you before that part, though? Because he was driving down the wrong way of the street. But there's no question in my mind he shouldn't have been behind the wheel of a car. And that's when I lost my, my phone and my wallet and we were wrestling in the street. He actually attacked me. Let's move forward. Okay. There came a time when just the two of you were in the car. Okay. When was that? Well, we were sitting in front of a bar that we we're about to go to. I got out the car and I dropped my phone. At that time, I asked him to take me back to get No, my... no, no. You dropped your phone. And you didn't know you dropped your phone because if you knew you dropped your phone, you would have picked it up. Right, correct. Right. So then you got back into the car. Driver's seat or passenger seat? I was in the passenger seat. And Mr. Gray was driving? Yes. And Mr. Mohammed was at the bar? Yes, he was with a friend. He, he had gone friend. to the bar, so yeah. it was the two of you. You're in the passenger seat, he's driving, and he's drunk. Yes. And you went back to the barbershop for him to use the restroom. Just follow, because there was a time when you wanted to go back to look for your dropped phone. Do you understand? Correct. Now, he goes back to the barbershop. How long was he in the restroom before you realized that you had dropped your phone? About five minutes. And you realized that you had dropped your phone because you tried to make a call while you were waiting for him. Correct. And it was snow on the ground, correct. It was, and it was snowing and he didn't have a frankfurter. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So now he's gone in to use the restroom. You go and look for your phone. You see how easy this is like, <laughs> it's like fishing in a fish tank. <laughs> you went inside 
And what did you do when you went inside, when you realized that you had lost your phone? I told him, let's go get my phone, and he drove us and went and got the phone. Okay, so he came out of the restroom, you got back into the passenger seat of the car. Correct. And he got into the driver's seat of the car. Correct. Oh. And what happened? Then we uh, called Mohammed to try to uh, meet back up with him after we got my phone. And then... No, 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 no. Step slowly he turned. Step by step, inch by inch. Now you're in the car, on your way back to the bar where Mohammed is to look for your phone. I got drunk. I, I think I blacked out after that point. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to your answer. According to your answer, you knew exactly what happened, sir. What do you mean you blacked out? You I mean, signed I know a sworn the, I know, statement. I know we got the phone. I got the phone back. Well, I know you got the phone, so you had to have driven back there successfully to get the phone. Yes. And is it at that point that you get back into the car and you blacked out? No, it was just I got really drunk after getting my phone. Like, after that, I just... You don't remember what happened? I remember getting my phone and being drunk. Like, I, yeah, I got oh, my phone. Okie dokie, there we go. Okay, you were all drunk. As a matter of fact, I have zero sympathy for any of you getting behind the wheel of a car. Okay, the car was damaged. Yes, I have. And so what you want me to believe, that you blame him, and I could understand that, because I don't know how drunk you actually were, whether or not you blame him for your wrecked car because you were driving the car back to find his phone and it wouldn't have been in that problem had he not dropped his phone out of the car or whether he was actually driving the car drunk. It's actually irrelevant to me. You were both driving drunk. You have a bill to fix the car? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. And I have pictures of the accident. Okay, so, well. yeah. So the bill was $5,500. And you had insurance? Yes. And the insurance paid for how much? I had no fault insurance. So you didn't have... I didn't have collision. Okay. You didn't have collision, so you had to pay $5,500, which you paid. Yeah. Divide that by two. Twenty seven fifty. That's what I thought. So, Mr. Gray, there are some lessons that you learn, and I don't know whether... Other courts would agree. I have to make a determination as to credibility. And quite frankly, I can't determine between two drunks who's telling me the truth. Because on the 27th of November, both of you were in no condition to drive a car. And I can't tell who actually drove the car at the time that it was wrecked. I but I do know that you drove the car from a club to your barbershop and that neither one of you stayed at the scene, called the police, because both of you were inebriated and knew that either one or both of you were going to get busted for a DUI because you both drove the car that evening. What? Ma'am, I was not drunk at the time that this happened. I was, I did go to the bars, but I wasn't in the bars drinking. That I had one Sorry. beer. 27.50, we're done. This court is adjourned. I feel like he kind of got the story wrong because I wasn't drunk, but... I think that was very fair. I feel like, you know, the judge was very reasonable. I had one beer that day, but, I mean, there's a limit to, like, being drunk in the state of Michigan. It was just one of those drunk things, you know, but we got it taken care of. I wanted to make him look like my vehicle. It was very snowy outside, and, you know, something happened, and I don't remember. I didn't do anything. I just called... I just called up tow truck and tried to get the situation solved. And uh, I'm very happy to get this case behind me. Satisfied I got something out of the deal? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully we could get back to being friends. You know, he's a good guy. I'm surprised you gave them anything. You know, unclean hands don't deserve money from this court, as we've seen time and again. So I'm surprised, really, that you gave him even half of what he was asking, because you couldn't tell which one of them was credible, if either of them were credible. And so, what are you supposed to do? I mean, I guess splitting it down the middle was... I understand why you made your judgment, but, but you I would have done... taught him a lesson, given him nothing. Interesting. Drunk Interesting. driving is not... No, nothing to play around with. Yeah, Very okay. Very serious. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad in the DNA it's getting tougher <laughs> rather than softer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. You may be right. Yeah. You may be right. I just felt that they were both at fault Mm -hmm. And either you leave the parties where they are, yeah. or you say both of you have to hurt a little. Yep. I uh, but I actually understand your position. Okay. Respect. And Trayon Dupree are suing their customer, Brianna Freeman, for rental car damage and lost wages. Court, come to order. All rise.
Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case 2174, Brown Dupree versus Freeman. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, who's the business person? That's us. That would be you? Yes. Your name is Mr. Dupree. Mr. Dupree. You a couple? No, ma'am. <laughs> it's business partners. In what business? Um, car rental. How do you know each other? Um, we met from the military. So you're not a couple, you're just in business together. I just want to know. Don't both smile. I just want to know. <laughs> Let's go. Um, we're friends. Yeah, we're friends. We're friends. What? <laughs> this is not going to happen for me. <laughs> we're not a couple. We know we're friends, you know? And we decided to go in business together. Where do you live? Houston, Texas. Where does she live? Houston, Where does Texas. She... Oh, Houston, Texas. Does she live in the same place that you do? In the same home? In the same place, building? Oh, no, we don't. Who do you live with? Myself. Who does she live with? Herself. When did you meet in the military? Maybe 2021. Not really sure exactly what month. But... Now, if you're in business together, is the only business you had this one car that we... Yes, we was, we was just starting. What kind of work do you do? Crane operation. Full time? Yes. And what about you? I work at a call center. So that's your primary source of income? That's correct. Yes. And you decided to do this car rental as sort of a side gig? We, yes. We had just got out the military, so we didn't have a job then. So we did it for a primary source of income. Well, you can't have one car that you rent as a primary source of income. We have our um, military disability check as well. So we have that. And we How long were you in the military? Almost nine years. And you? Eight. Where did you serve? Norfolk, Virginia, um, and Mayport, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. So you were never out of the United States? Yes, I went overseas for oh. deployments, but never stationed. Oh, but where did you go for, on your deployment? Um, Bahrain, Dubai, Greece, Italy, and all over. Did you like it? Yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, good. Yeah. What about you? Only Virginia. Only Virginia? Only Virginia. How did you become disabled in Virginia? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're on a mil you said you're on a military disability. So, mm -hmm. you know, I could understand if you deployed someplace else. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea. You have no idea what? Why, um, I guess, became disabled. Just mentally, I guess. Mental. Well, you applied for a disability from the right. Army. You said what? What? I said it mental, mentally, mentally, mental. Just my own curiosity. I have to see how this is going. How much is your disability benefit from the Army? 2000 A month? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not an answer. Yes, it's an answer. What about you? The same. And is your disability mental or physical? Both. Well, your physical disability doesn't inhibit you from being a crane operator. No, not really. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I love America. <laughs> OK, so now you're out. You're both on disability from the Army. You don't have a job yet, so you decide to buy a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. That's correct. What year Mercedes? 2014. And how much was it? 22000 Is there a note on the car? Yes. For how much? Um, 350 Per month? Yes. How much of a loan did you take out? 23 one of them. It's, it's not too much. The car was only 22 the car I'm, was 22. I don't 20. know the exact number that the car is right now, but it was between 21 and 23,000 that we owed on it. Where and I took the, the loan out. Where is the car now? In Texas. With whom? She has it right now. What was the rental agreement that you had with Ms. Freeman? You didn't form a business corporation or anything else. Am I correct? Yes, we have an LLC. And the sole asset is this car? Yes. You bought the car when? Give me the date again. I think it was in July. July of 2022? That's correct. And when did you rent the car to the defendant? August 27th. Do you have the rental agreement? So, I, I don't have the original agreement because it was in my car that was stolen, but I made her take a picture with her driver's license and send it to me. So this is a copy, and this is um, before she signed it. And I have after I signed it. It's literally the same thing. Yes, that, so you that, know you. That, that talk. Oh, 
Okay. What I'd like you to do is take a look at this, Ms. Freeman, and tell me if you have it. Mm -hmm. It's the same yes, one as she had. Okay. And this is the entire agreement. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know why you're arguing. <laughs> it doesn't appear. She's it doesn't excited. appear. It, madam, it doesn't appear as if you are losing this case. So I don't know why you feel compelled to make it hostile. Selena Brown and Trayon Dupree claim their customer, Brianna Freeman, owes for damages to their Mercedes rental car. Brianna is countersuing for lost wages. So there's nothing in this agreement that prevents her from allowing somebody else to use the car, and the agreement specifically says that if anything happens to the car, she is responsible to use her insurance, and you have a policy number, your Correct. policy number for insurance. Okay, so your boyfriend was driving the car on what date? Um, the first. First of what? September. And I have the uh, accident report if you want that. Not yet. I may. Not yet. But there was an accident and the car was damaged. Correct. Anybody have a photograph of the damage to the car? I have it on my phone if you'd like to see I, that. I would. While we're waiting, Your Honor, I found the LLC filing that lists both of them as the... Um, principals. As the principals, and but they list the same address for both of them. Their residents are listed as the same. Oh, really? Hmm. Interesting. Want to say that a little louder? <laughs> I just said I found both of them listed as managing members of the LLC with the same address for both of them listed. The I lived in a different yeah, state. Yeah, she lived... I was in Florida. We don't live, we don't live together. That's what y'all... It just lists. It yeah, lists that's the just the LLC address. Well. Um, it's in my boyfriend's phone because the number that's on the contract was his phone at the time. So if you want to see, I had a picture right here, and I have multiple pictures as well of the car. That's correct. Well, that's what I'm asking you for. I said I want to see pictures of the damage to the car. You were in an accident. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you agreed in this contract mm -hmm. that if you were in an accident, Brianna, that would be you. Yes. Will use her insurance. If anything happens during the rental, Brianna will be responsible to pay out of pocket. Correct. You signed that? Correct. Okay, so you were in an accident. I don't care whose fault it is, because yeah. it doesn't have anything to do with fault. Picture of the car. No, multiple. It's... It's a paper picture. It's um, a couple pictures, so you can just check as well. Stand up. Somebody hit you in the rear? No, in the front. Oh, this is the front they of the car? They ran a stop sign. What? They ran a stop sign. I was coming up, they were coming across. Well, whatever. You had damage in the front of your car. In my mind, that, that usually means that you hit somebody. No, they came across from me. They ran a stop sign in front of me. And you hit them? Okay, well, that's what it usually means, that you hit somebody in the front. Okay. And that was on September 1st. All right. Did you notify your insurance company? Yes. Okay, I'd like to see proof of that. So these are the um, claims, um, the quotes they gave me to fix the car. Um, also, this is when um, I let her know, Ms. Brown, what was covered under my policy. I'd like to see it. So that's that. It okay. shows what's covered in my policy. Was the car fixed? Absolutely not. No. It was not? Not at all. Why not? Um, because... I didn't talk to Trey on Mr. Dupree, however you say his name, until the day, September the 5th. All of my business was going through Mrs. Brown. So I don't know if he just found out what happened, but when I called the insurance on the 1st, they let me know that he was the owner of the vehicle. I said, okay, they said they'll have to go through everything through him so that the car can get fixed because I wasn't the title holder. I said, that's fine. I said, okay, due to the fact that the car got wrecked, I let her know that once the car goes to Mercedes-Benz to get fixed, they give a loaner vehicle. I let them know everything that was covered. Why it didn't get fixed? Because she popped up to my home and caused drama. I lost my job behind it, so forth and so on. What does that have to do with your responsibility? Your boyfriend had an accident with a car. You have a contract that says you're going to fix it. Because Trayon said it wasn't enough. What do you mean Trayon said it wasn't I enough? I sent him the quote for their adjusters, and he said that wasn't enough to get it fixed. And I have that text message from Trayon. Just a second. I'd like to see your quote from your company.
Where did you take the car for them to send an adjuster to take a look um, at the car? I had to take pictures of the car and upload it to the app they sent me, and that's how they got those quotes. They have an estimate here of $3,000. Mm -hmm. Did you get an estimate to fix the car? Yes, yeah, so we got an estimate. I'd like to see it. In yeah. person. In person. That was just the picture, and when I okay. talked... Got it. May I interject a little bit? Because Brianna kind of lying, and she raised her right hand. So, Brianna didn't notify us that the car was wrecked until Third. September 3rd. She told us that she was in a hospital with her dying L father. Listen correct? to me. Listen to me. I don't care. She lied about what? I don't care. She, she lied about how the car I got wrecked. I don't she... care. It doesn't matter how the car got wrecked. She has an obligation to fix it. She has an obligation to fix it. And to be quite honest with you, this is a Mercedes, and this car can't be fixed for $2,900. Can't. He's absolutely right. This car can't be fixed based upon that damage. And so he wasn't prepared to say here. No, it wasn't that at all. So once, I guess, he got involved in the business, I was talking to Ms. Brown. She said she had a rental the next day or something in that manner. And I said, OK. Well, let me find a Mercedes-Benz that can actually get your car in so you can get this loan a car for you to rent your car out. Also, in the midst of that, I was going to pay for the rental that she had that was so much one to cancel on her. So I said, OK, Mercedes has a loan a car and can accept your car at the time. Well, they couldn't fix this car for $2,900. So that's what they gave me. And they said that if it went to a Mercedes-Benz shop, they will honor that. I don't know that at all. That's what they I've told got, me. I don't care. But regardless of the price of getting the car fixed, I was going to pay, because I know that we was at fault for it. Quote, unquote, okay. it was my contract that I signed. Okay. That wasn't an issue. Well, then you can take that up with your insurance company. Correct. I, do, I didn't have a problem with paying. Yeah, then you can take it, it up with your insurance company. She lied about how the accident happened. So they denied... Hey, don't listen to me. <laughs> I, you started to say that before. I told you I don't care. She's just lying and cost us so much money. Like, Madam, listen to me. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Selena Brown and Trayon Dupree have accused their customer, Brianna Freeman, of damaging their Mercedes rental car after her boyfriend was in an accident. He has an estimate that looks like a pretty legitimate estimate. They bought the car. It's You're a right. relatively new car. They paid $22,000 for it. Your boyfriend wrecked it, and he has an estimate which looks reasonable for $8,000 to fix it. And if your insurance company is dragging their heels and not paying mm -hmm. what they should, you take that up with your insurance it wasn't company. A, I never got that quote, by the way. Which quote? The quote that you the $8,000. I never got that. Well, I'm going to show it to you. Oh, well, it's probably be true. $8,319. Her insurance denied it because she lied. She lied about how the accident happened. So they denied... Hey, don't listen to me. <laughs> you started to say that before. I told you I don't care. My insurance... Just a second. I told... Your insurance what? Denied. Never denied the claim. I have, I have proof. I talked to him. I have proof. I have the email where he, he said they denied it because... They definitely denied it. Because I told them to stop because she popped up at my house. Because she lied about the accident. Because we tried to get it through our insurance as well. I don't know why you're arguing. <laughs> it not, doesn't appear... She it doesn't lying. appear... It, madam, it doesn't appear as if you are losing this case. So I don't know why you feel compelled to make it hostile. I don't understand why. She's just lying and cost us so much money, like... Madam, listen to me. We're all told... <sighs> You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Your car is in this condition at whose house? At your house? That's correct. And the car, since the accident, which was mm, four months ago, yeah. has it been rented? No. Yeah. No. Is it drivable? Yes, it's drivable. When was the last time you drove it? Last week. When was the last time you rented it? Brianna, says Brianna. Have you been making the payments on the car? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Who's been making the payments? Both. What is the monthly payment? Three fifty. Hmm? Three fifty. Fifty. You told me that. The insurance up to date? So 
We had insurance, we had commercial insurance on it. But when I put in the claim and told them what happened, because we did get lied to about what actually happened and we didn't get informed of the accident to the third. But when I put in the claim, I put it in how they told us what happened. And my insurance, they found the police report before we did and they seen what actually happened. So they felt like we were trying to do fraud. So the guy, he told us, it's better for us to pull the claim because it's gonna look like it's fraud on our part. So they dropped us from the insurance. So they dropped you mm -hmm. after? Yes. After the accident? Yes. Can I see the police report now? Well, this police report indicates that the other person was at fault. That was my... Shh. Oh, sorry. Am I wrong about that? No, ma'am. No, then don't speak. This police report, did you see it? Yes. Got it right here. I'd like to see what you have. This police report clearly says that Unit 1, which was the woman, ran a stop sign. That's what it says. Why Wait, would right. your insurance company drop you? because we gave the story that she told us, so it looks like we're doing fraud. Yeah. And they, they, basically, ignorance isn't an excuse for them, so. Actually, that's pretty outrageous. We just told it was a hit and run. She told us it was a hit and run, so we told them that. She said she was in the hospital when it, was, it got hit, and then we found the report. She waited, in, she, she waited until the day that we had a rental to tell us. We had another rental on the third that afternoon. She told us that morning. On the third? That's correct. And the accident was on the first? That's correct. Okay. I think you have to get your car fixed. I think that the fact that your insurance company canceled your insurance when it was clear, clear, that he was not at fault in this accident, at least according to the police report, is actually pretty outrageous that they canceled your insurance. Is there any insurance on the car now? Yes, there's regular insurance on it. Not commercial anymore? No, not right now, because we're not renting it. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $8,000. We're finished. Thank you very much. Court is adjourned. I'm glad we won and everything. I felt like, you know, we deserved more than we got, but at the end of the day, we won the case. I'm not mad at the decision. I'm fine with it regardless, because um, I know I was trying to get it fixed. It was just a timing issue. She lied about everything. She literally lied about everything. She pulled out a gun on me. And every, like, Lying, I don't have anything to lie about. It's all in my evidence. Like, she told me to come basically get the car and the keys in the mailbox. And when I went over there to get it, she pulled a gun out on me because I took my wig off. She posted stuff saying I lied about things. I didn't want, I pulled my gun out on her. Like, girl, I don't have a gun, like, at all. I think that they put it inside, so they checked them. But they said they couldn't go inside, so they checked their body. They, they checked them. They wasn't able to prove that they had a gun because, yeah. So she said it was a gun, it was a bat, and like I had to get checked twice by the police officer. And it was like, she came over here looking for problems because the car was gonna get towed. It's definitely a risk, but you know, make sure we're prepared for stuff like that from now on. No hard feelings supporting black businesses, but it is what it is. You know what you know, it's just facts. I think I should just be grateful. I'm just gonna be quiet and just be grateful.